from the Astrodome in Houston. It's ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Tonight, the Giants and the Majors' top home run man, Matt Williams, take on the Astros and leading MVP candidate, Jeff Bagwell. It's the ESPN Sunday Night Game of the Week. It's only August 7th, but Jeff Bagwell is already rewriting the Astros record book. This home run on Friday was his 38th of the year, breaking Jim Wynn's club record. Then last night, when he homered again, it gave him an astounding 115 RBIs in 111 games. Tonight, Bagwell and the Astros go for the sweep. You're looking at the house that Joe Morgan built, the Houston Astrodome. Tonight, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, featuring the San Francisco Giants and the Houston Astros. Now, the Cincinnati Reds defeated Atlanta today, and so Houston needs a victory to remain one game out in the Central. Meanwhile, over in the West, the Dodgers won at Denver, and so the Giants, who've lost five in a row, badly are in need of a victory here tonight. Hello, everyone. I'm Bidding you welcome to our telecast tonight. The Giants with Strawberry got red hot, but now they've fallen upon hard times against the powers of the Central, the Reds and the Astros. And still, the Giants with some great firepower, including this great one-two punch of Barry Bonds and Matt Williams. Matt Williams right now chasing the Babe and Roger Maris. And last night, he hit number 42, an opposite field shot. That gives he and Bonds a combined total of 78 home runs. Mays and McCovey, Maris and Mantle, Ruth and Gehrig, Morgan and Bench, Morgan and Wynn. <laughs> Joe Morgan is here, and the Giants, right now, Joe, with some great talent in the middle, but still struggling. Well, you're exactly right. Since Daryl Strawberry came over, it allowed Barry Bonds to hit third. I think Barry Bonds is the best third-place hitter in the National League. And so he's hit third. He's gotten hot since Barry Strawberry came over. And Strawberry has also provided the protection for Matt Williams. He has just been unbelievable. Every time Matt Williams gets a mistake, he hits it out of the ballpark. But the Giants' problem started really when Mike Jackson and Kevin Rogers went down. Their starting pitching has been pretty good, but their release pitching and late pitching has not been doing very well. And because of weary arms, they're in trouble right now. All right. Now. Barry Bonds seems to be inspired by the competition. He's the perennial MVP in the National League. But Jeff Bagwell right now probably is the leader. He's got 39 homers, 115 RBIs, and Jeff Bagwell has kind of quietly become one of the great stars in this league and in this game, Joe. Well, John, the thing that surprises me about Bagwell is he's been able to do that in the Astrodome. For years, this was the death knell for all sluggers when they came in here. Jeff Bagwell has made this a band box, but he's also had a lot of help. Craig Biggio has turned into, my opinion, the best second baseman in the National League. He's been providing some offense. Also, they've got Ken Caminetti hitting behind him, so they have a very solid offensive ball club. In the past, they were slap hitters that just ran. Now they are a good power hitting ball club. You know, Joe, I think it's the most interesting Astros team I've yes. ever seen. Well, I agree with you, except for, you know, the other ones you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've also got a great matchup tonight. Doug Drabeck and Billy Swift going at it. The Giants and the Astros stay with us. Sunday Night Baseball from the Houston Astrodome. This is John Miller with Joe Morgan. Welcome back. We're just about ready to get started. Daryl Strawberry and Matt Williams hitting together in the order just after Bonds. And look at the Giants. They were dismal. Worse in the league offensively before Strawberry. But they have been uh, rather prolific in terms of their run scoring capability since Strawberry arrived. Here is their batting order now. It'll be Darren Lewis leading it off in center field. Royce Clayton at short. Then Barry Bonds in 36 homers at left. Matt Williams 42 homers at third. Then Strawberry hitting fifth. Dave Martinez at first. It'll be Patterson at second. Kurt Manwaring the catcher hitting eighth. And Billy Swift is the pitcher. 20 game winner last year. And for the Astros Doug Drabeck who's just pitching uh, like the Doug Drabeck you remember from his uh, great days with the Pirates. And you take a look at Doug Drabeck. That's his four seam fastball. Throws it. There's Doug Drayback. This is his four seam fastball. He also throws a two seam fastball. And that's his slider. And that's his curveball. And he also throws a variation of the circle change. 
So he uses all of his pitches and he uses them all well, but he has to get his curveball over to be effective because that's a great off feed pitch. And let's take a look at the Astros defense. Jeff Bagwell is not only a good hitter, and you can see he leads the National League first baseman assist, but he's a great defensive first baseman as well. We'll take a look. This is Monday. Now watch this great 3-6-3 double play from his knees and recovers in time to get back to the bag. Now, Charlie Hayes tries to move Kingery over to third. He comes up, fires, and he's out by a mile. So plays, very unusual plays made by Bagwell this week. You do not see that very often from a first baseman. Jeff Bagwell, and what a show he's been putting on this year. Here we go now. And the bunt by Darren Lewis on the first pitch from Graybeck, and it is foul. So we are underway at the Astrodome, eight minutes past seven central time here. Well, that's Darren Lewis's game plan, I think, against some pitchers like Drabeck, who are very difficult to hit. He will drop down a bunt. At least that brings the third baseman in a little tighter and gives him an opportunity to maybe drive one by him later in the ballgame. This is Caminiti. Got a great arm. Out at first base. Didn't quite get him in enough. If he'd gotten him in another half a step, that ball would have been over his head for a base hit. But again, a very fine play there by Ken Caminetti. See, he's in tight already. He reacts very well off this AstroTurf. And once he catches it, you're just about out <laughs> because he has a strong, very strong and accurate arm. And you can see it doesn't take him long to get it to first base. Ken Caminetti with uh, both he and Matt Williams in the game here tonight. We're looking at two of the best third basemen in the National League. Here is Royce Clayton. That is a foul ball. 0 and 1 to Clayton. Now Clayton hitting only 237, which is kind of a disappointment. Last year it looked like he had arrived in the big leagues and was going to be an outstanding hitter as well as being a fine shortstop but he's not been able to get it back together so far this year. You're right he got off to a slow start and he's been struggling last year he drove in 60 plus runs and he hit very well but he's played great defensive shortstop for the Giants this year. One out nobody on. Curveball. Left fielder Gonzalez. And that is out number two. So two down to nobody on and Barry Bonds will be coming up and probably all too often this year, it's been Barry Bonds with nobody on or nobody in scoring position, which is, of course, one of the big differences between Bonds and uh, Jeff Bagwell. To take nothing away from Bagwell, but Biggio and Finley, speedsters, high on base averages, he's getting a lot of RBI opportunities, a lot more than Bonds. Ball one. And again, remember, Bonds was hitting fifth most of the season until Daryl Strawberry came, then he moved up to third. And again, I, I say that I think that's his best position. He had a great year out of the fifth slot last year. But he also was walked over 40 times intentionally. And, the, and going down the lineup, you also lose at bats over the course of the season. So he lost a lot of at bats last year that he could have had with runners in scoring position that he didn't get a chance to hit. You see what he's done batting third, 350. High in the air to left field. Back goes Gonzalez. And gone, a home run. Number 37 for Barry Bonds. An opposite field home run. And Bonds continues to hit the long ball with increasing regularity. He had three in a game just this past Tuesday against Cincinnati. And since the All-Star break, he had a two home runs in consecutive games against Montreal. This is a fastball out over the plate Bonds does not try to pull it he just goes with it goes the other way and you can see he's got power to all fields and the ball carries very well although that would not have been a home run in the old ballpark they moved the fences in about 15 feet all the way around but that's a home run for Barry Bonds number 37 speaking of home runs here is Matt Williams and it's ball one 42 home runs he's three games ahead of Roger Maris 1961 pace when he hit 61 homers, Maris hit number 42 in the 114th game. Williams has done it in 111 games. And he swings at the slider. One ball, one strike. By the way, Barry Bonds, one of the note on his home run. In his last 21 games, 14 home runs for Barry Bonds. Matt Williams, 42 homers, 93 batted in. He and Bonds, what a one-two punch. You've got to remember Mays and McCovey. 
before that Mays and Cepeda the Giants have had some great one two combinations I mean more recently Clark and uh, Kevin Mitchell right 1989 but uh, 1965 Mays and McCovey combined for 91 homers a Giants record and now Bonds and Williams have 79 in shallow center field Biggio makes the catch the Giants get a run though on the Bonds home run that Biggio Finley and then Bagwell that's one the Astros coming up back here at the Astrodome in Houston this is John Miller with Joe Morgan and there's Terry Collins who's got his Astros in the race and they're hitting well here at the Astrodome which historically has never happened a much better team batting average at home than on the road and they're scoring just as well either place and their power is uh, pretty good here almost a home run per game Biggio leads off second base then Findlay in center field Bagwell hits third then Caminiti also productive at third base Gonzalez in left field tiny Felder right field uh, Scott service the catcher and Duhar Cedeno at short and then Doug Graybeck hits ninth the pitcher on the mound for the San Francisco Giants he was a 20 game winner last year Billy Swift just back from the disabled list the last couple of weeks and he's pitched well well he's pitched well he threw 108 pitches his last time out but Billy Swift's a guy that doesn't throw a lot of pitches during a ball game. He will throw a sinker. He will change speeds on the sinker, and he has a very good slider. And let's take a look at the Giants' defense. And let's take a look at Darren Lewis in center field. He's only he made two errors so far in his career, and both of those errors came this year. Take a look at July 24th. This is a ball hit by Ryan Thompson of the New York Mets. This is one of the greatest catches of the season. Darren Lewis robs Ryan Thompson of a home run and Barry Bonds shows his appreciation. So here's Biggio. He takes a called strike. Biggio 28 years of age. And he has been with the Astros all the way through his young career. 287 last year. Hammered to Williams at third. And he throws him out. One away. Well you can always tell if Billy Swift is throwing well by the number of ground balls he gets. That is not your routine ground ball, but that's what he wants. And sometimes a single ball pitcher can be hurt in the Astrodome because of the AstroTurf. Balls might shoot through there that are normally just routine ground balls on natural turf. Here's Steve Finley, another very fast runner. He's not like Biggio. He doesn't have the high on base average, but he can steal a base, and he has muscled up a little bit this year. He's got 10 home runs. He takes a strike from Swift. By the way, Biggio certainly overshadowed on this team with Bagwell in the lineup. He's got 41 doubles, a 403 on base average, and 37 steals. He's been a great leadoff man. And that is the ball. Now, these guys have kind of all come up together. Now, Caminiti. And Biggio predate the arrival of Bagwell, and uh, Steve Finley came over with Pete Harnish in the trade that sent Glenn Davis to the Orioles a few years back. Hit real hard to Strawberry in right center. Out number two. But now they're all enjoying the fruits of success in their hard work, really for the first time. And of course, they look at this next hitter coming up, Jeff Bagwell. Is the man who is leading them right now, and why not? 39 homers, 115 battered in. 1996, huh? President. <laughs> Let's see how the Giants try to pitch Bagwell, John. He has just murdered them not only the last couple of days, but the entire season. Let's see that if they try to crowd him. They were out over the plate yesterday. Out over the plate again. So uh, we'll see if they make any adjustments. Bagwell, very fine hitter. I think you have to come inside off on him first and then try to go away. And the Giants have not had any success with him so far this season. Look at that. Five home runs, 16 runs batted in. 581 batting average. Well, he came in. I think that's what you have to do. You have to establish to Bagwell that you're going to come inside and then try to get him to chase some pitches away. But I think you have to do that with all good hitters. You have to establish to them that you will come inside. If they think you're afraid to pitch them inside, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. One ball and two strikes now to Jeff Bagwell. 16-game hitting streak going. 
with 28 hits in those games, a 491 average, and 10 homers, and 26 RBIs during 16 games. Down in a deep, deep crouch here. Strike three call over the outside. So Billy Swift gets the side in order. Daryl Strawberry will be coming up. One nothing Giants. That's the view from out in left field here at the Astrodome. They don't look like seats that I want to <laughs> have, however. Here comes Daryl Strawberry to lead it off for the Giants. Strawberry, four homers, and 17 battered in in 82 at bats. Facing Doug Brayback. One nothing the Giants and a curveball is too low. Joe West is the home plate umpire. Daryl Strawberry, 293 home runs, eight times an all-star. And now Strawberry trying to get his career back together, to resurrect it, and as he will be quick to say, at this point, just his life back together. I think the Giants are the proper team for Strawberry to make his comeback with. He's a friend of Dusty Baker's. He's known Dusty since he was a little kid. He's close to Barry Bonds now, and Matt Williams has taken him under his wing. So he's right in the proper spot, I believe, for him. Two and one to count now. Bobby Bonds, his new hitting instructor, also the Giants' first base coach. Strawberry, in that nine-season period, averaged 31 home runs a year. Mostly with the Mets, but also with the Dodgers. And John, I think you have to give the Giants management credit for making the step, taking the chance to bring Daryl Strawberry to San Francisco. Three and two, the count down to Strawberry. He'll be followed in the inning by Dave Martinez and then uh, John Patterson as Dave Martinez on deck. One nothing, Giants ahead. We're in the second inning. Barry Bonds feels like. That there are times when he should be the one protecting Strawberry in the batting order. And that's ball four to Strawberry. He gets the leadoff walk here in the second inning. Bond says he thinks when left handers are pitching, since he does hit well against lefties, why not put Strawberry third and let Williams and Bond sit behind Strawberry? Might get Darrell a, a pitch or two to hit. He says he's proposed that to Dusty Baker, but with the possibility of a strike looming in the next few days at this point that it doesn't look like Dustin's going to change anything but this Bond's thinking like a manager Joe. <laughs> I think Dusty will decide what's right and <laughs> do what's right. Here is Dave Martinez. 249. Dusty saying that the Giants have lost not only key players but leaders in the ball club like Robbie Thompson is a key man in the middle of that infield turning the double play just a great second baseman but also he says he's the leader on the infield the guy who goes in and settles down pitchers you know just when to do whatever needs to be done he says Willie McGee has been a key man in the outfield he's been a leader on the ball club among the outfielders Mike Jackson same thing in the bullpen so they've lost some key players to injury but also players whose impact in the ball club superseded just their performance on the field. And the Giants, uh, even with the addition of Strawberry, I mean, it shows in their record, they're seven games below 500. Now, Drayback struggling here. Now, 2 0 to Dave Martinez after they walked to Strawberry. And that's one of the things that Raybeck made a conscious effort to do at the beginning of the season is to be more aggressive, to throw more first pitch strikes, to stay ahead of the hitters. And of course, at this inning, he hasn't done that. You saw Patterson is on deck. Three and oh. He seems to be a little overly concerned with Dave Martinez, Joe. This is not Barry Bonds batting right now or a Strawberry. Well, well Martinez usually keeps the ball in the ballpark. Well, he had a good game here last year. He hit a couple of home runs. So, Drayback is aware of the fact that he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. 3-0. And 3-1 oh. and and now. 
Now this is a situation where you know a team is struggling a little bit like the Giants. You got a three and one count. Strawberry runs well. Martinez can put the ball in play. You might want to try hit and run because Dre Beck's going to have to give you a good pitch to hit or it's ball four. We'll see if Dusty's a little so inclined tonight to put the runner in motion. He's not going. Base hit to center field. Greg Bonet, the second base umpire, almost got hit by that one. Stopping at second is Strawberry. And so the Giants have something started here in the second. Two men on, nobody out. Patterson coming up, and now Mel Stottlemyre, the Houston pitching coach, is on his way to the mound. Strawberry up at second. With Martinez at first. So Drebeck already trailing 1 0 in the Barry Bonds home run. Into some trouble here with Patterson and Manwaring. Now you're low on the order here, Joe. Is this a, a bunt situation for the Giants? No, I don't think they will, although Billy Swift's a pretty good athlete. Not only does he fill his position well, he can put the ball in play. He's a good bunter himself. But I think when you're at this stage of the batting order, you very difficult to bunt him over for the eighth place hitter because they'd probably walk the eighth place hitter. Doug Graybeck told us before the game that he's been more effective this season getting ahead of the hitters. When I first came here in 1991, you almost had to wear sleeves in here. It was so cold. Uh, it's and Jeff Bagwell was also saying how much uh, warmer it is in the Astrodome these days. <laughs> Two men on, nobody out, and swinging away is Patterson, and he fouls it back to the screen. But, John, that's a good point. That is one of the reasons that the ball is carrying so much better here you know, than it did in the past because it was cold in here and the ball didn't travel well. Now it's a lot warmer and the ball does travel a lot better. John Patterson. Now look at those 31 RBIs. Not too impressive. No. But that is third best on this ball club. Which tells you right there about the problems the Giants have had scoring runs this year, particularly before they get Strawberry. Most often if Bonds didn't get it, or Matt Williams didn't get it done. It just didn't get done. And before Strawberry came, very rarely were both Bonds and Williams hot at the same time. Strawberry at second. After a walk, Martinez at first. The curveball of beauty. Out is one ball and two strikes to Patterson. Man wearing is on deck. Patterson is a good fastball hitter, so Drebeck does not want to throw him too many fastballs unless he gets behind in the count he's able to get that curveball over and I think you'll see him try to get him out with maybe a sinker away or something off speed. Almost hit him two and two the count. Looks like the sinker to me. Yeah. Not exactly where he wanted it. He's trying to if you get a ground ball he figures he can get out of this inning without any more damage. So you try to get a ground ball out of the hitter and get a double play and then you have a spot to put the eighth place hitter if you want. Little bit low. The crowd doesn't think so. <laughs> what a surprise. Nerves of steel there by Patterson though. What an eye he's got Joe. John sometimes you take a pitch because you can't hit it. Not so much because you think it's a ball. Let's take a pitch, look at this pitch see if he's fooled. See he's fooled right there. Three and two the count. Two men on, nobody out. Foul on the right field line. And uh, he's got it up there. Nice, nicely done. Three and two the count to Patterson. Now, he's got only a 230 batting average for the year, but he has. Had some success with the runner at second or third or both. He's got Strawberry at second right now. Nobody out. Three and two the count. One nothing. The Giants ahead. That is a foul ball again. Bagwell tosses it back to Drayback. Still three and two. And Patterson will give it yet another shot. Now he's in there instead of. Bobby Thompson. Thompson out for the year with surgery. And they're confident that Thompson will be ready to go come uh, next spring. Strawberry at second. Martinez at first. Patterson with a 
three and two count. Bagwell. S safe at second, out at first. Third base coach Wendell Kim screaming at Dave Martinez to get back in the bag at second base. The high throw by Bagwell pulled Cedeno off the bag. And Bonet immediately signaled safe, except Martinez didn't realize it. He left the bag at second base. Well, he showed you the double play that Bagwell turned earlier this week of 3-6-3. Well, he comes up with this one, but it's a high throw. Otherwise, they probably would have had a double play. You see, pulls Cedeno off the bag. Martinez thinks he's out. And Patterson is out at first base. Good throw at second and would have been a double play. So Patterson gets the runners over. And here is Manwaring. Runners at second and third. The infield in at the corners. Sinking fastball misses. Ball one. Manwaring, 247, one home run, 27 battered in. And they are pitching to him, Joe, with first base open here. Well, they're going to pitch very carefully. You remember, Drabeck is a veteran. He knows how to pitch around someone or try to get them to chase a pitch. So they have confidence in him being able to do that. He's not giving him anything good. The problem is you have a lot of young pitchers now in Major League Baseball trying to do the same thing. A manager tells him to pitch a guy tough. Before you know it, first pitch is a breaking ball in the middle of the plate, and he's hit it out of the ballpark. But Drabeck is a veteran, and he knows how to pitch, and he's not going to give him anything middle of the plate in, I don't believe. Unless, it is, unless he makes a mistake. Giants ahead already, one nothing. That's a strike. Two and one now. Two men wearing. There's Bill Swift, the pitcher. And not a bad hitting pitcher on deck. This is a time where if you're the eighth place hitter, you have to expand your strike zone a little bit. Any bio ground ball you hit, other than at the first baseman, will score a run. So you want to try to get the runner in. If you take a walk and Swift hits the ground ball, double play, you're out of the inning. Swinging at the curveball, fouling it back into the crowd. The count now two and two to Manwaring. So you gladly take a, a ground ball, ground ball yeah. toward the middle? Or? Yeah, ground ball is short or second, and you're happy. Because the infield is playing back at short and second. At third base, they have a chance to come to the plate and also bag well at first. They're playing in a little bit, but short and second will get you a run home. One out. Reach for that slider. Two and two the count. The difficult thing for man wearing now, John, is the fact that Drabeck has thrown him four different speeds on the breaking ball. He hasn't seen a fastball yet. And you get in a situation where unconsciously you will look for the breaking ball and he throws a fastball by you. Two and two the count. In the center, tagging at third is Strawberry. Finley with a catch. Here comes Strawberry. And he's in there, standing. It is two nothing. San Francisco man when he gets the job done is 28th RBI. Well, you have to give man wearing a lot of credit there. He was fighting everything off and going right back through the middle. And it's a breaking ball out over the plate, and he hits the fly ball to center field. Good job there by Manwaring. You'll see this is another curveball, more of a slider there, out over the plate, and a pretty good pitch. And here's Strawberry tagging up. Strawberry runs well, so he easily beats the throw to the plate. And the Giants have a two to nothing lead. Darrell Strawberry, his leadoff walk, has turned into a run for the Giants. He talks it over with Dusty Baker as Billy Swift bunts. Service. Throws it out. And that's the inning. Two nothing Giants. Caminetti coming up. And girls, Professor Morgan. John, Tommy Davis, the great Dodger hitter, was a proponent of the open stance earlier. Let's take a look at Andres Galarraga. This gives you a better view of the pitcher. Canseco does the same thing over at Texas. Bell, Albert Bell at Cleveland. Mo Vaughn. They're all hit from the open stance, but the guy that does his best is Jeff Bagwell right now. And he also hits from with his hips open, so he has to close them to get back on track. And watch, he strides in for a moment. Now he opens back up and attacks the ball. And he's done that very well this year. But Tommy Davis was a guy that was talking to me in the 60s about hitting from an open stance. I wish I would have listened to him. It seems to work now. Well, Tommy Davis, the last major leaguer 
to surpass 150 RBIs in a year. That was 1962 when he had 153. And Bagwell with 115 already. Here's Caminiti off the glove. A Patterson base hit for Ken Caminiti. Another guy that has done very well for the Astros is Caminetti because he hits behind Bagwell, so he has to protect him. He's a good low fastball hitter. That's a low fastball. He lines it off the glove of John Patterson. Patterson with a good effort there. Just can't quite come down with it. Caminetti has been over the past few years a better right-handed hitter than he has been a left-handed hitter, and he's been struggling lately, and he just started to swing the bat a bit well against from the left side. Caminiti, 283 for the year, 18 homers, 71 RBIs. Hitting after Bagwell. Now here is Luis Gonzalez, third in the club with 63 runs batted in. And the sinking fastball from Swift is ball one. But uh, Tommy Davis, the year he had 153 RBIs, had 111 RBIs after 111 games. So Bagwell got four more after the same number of games. And uh, Tommy Davis, and again, he was the last 150 RBI man, and the uh, Bagwell's got a great shot if uh, all of the games end up being played, uh, becoming the next one. Well, George Foster, one of my teammates in Cincinnati, had 149. That doesn't count. Oh, it doesn't count. <laughs> Darren Lewis can't get it. Damn it, he's going to be waved home. And he will score without a throw. This is the new Astros of the 90s, John. These guys find the gaps, hit the ball hard. Here's Finley. He also hits from an open stance. He lines this, I'm sorry, Gonzalez. He hits this ball in the left center field. Darren Lewis almost gets there, just off the edge of his glove. Lewis got a great jump on it, and he's about three inches short of making another great catch. But Gonzalez, again, like Bagwell, like Penseco, he hits from an open stance. 64th RBI of the year for Luis Gonzalez, and it is 2 to 1 for the Giants. Still nobody out, and here is Mike Felder trying to get the Gonzalez over to third base. And he has done it. Patterson throws him out as Gonzalez takes third. One out here, and now let's go to Linda Cohn for an update. Thanks a lot, John. MCI Proof Positive takes us to Fenway Park for game two of a doubleheader between Cleveland and Boston, a seesaw game. Top of the 12th, Tony Pena lay down the blows down the butt. Mo Vaughn throws it away with the error. Wayne Kirby scores the go-ahead run for Cleveland. 14-10, top of the 12th. Thank you, Linda. And uh, the, the Red Sox already won the first game of that doubleheader, 4-1. to one. So Cleveland going for the split there. Here, 2-1 to one Giants. But a runner with third and one out, and the batter is Scott Service. And they play the infield halfway, the Giants do. Service hitting only 198, but he's got nine homers and 41 driven in. And the Astros catchers, he and Eusebio, 69 RBIs between the two of them. So they've been getting some, uh, some very good run production out of their catchers. Swift is liable to get a ground ball. Fastball in for a strike. So that's not a bad strategy. Why not play the infield in a right. bit? Well, you're at the bottom of the order and you do not want to give up a ground ball on a, you know, a run on a routine ground ball. So you play the infield in and force them to hit the ball by you. You see how the Giants are playing it. Then on turf, it's almost like being all the way in anyway, in the, up the middle there. Just a couple of steps from being all the way in. Hit it right down off his foot, strike two. I mentioned uh, the other Houston catcher, Tony Eusebio. That's Tony on the bench. He has also been a very fine run producer and has hit 303 for the Astros. Got to come out of nowhere. He's been very productive. Well, when you are in contention as the Astros are, a lot of things have to happen for you good. Good things happen, and simply, uh, if you look at their bullpen, they've had a lot of rookies and young players do the job out of the bullpen for them. Terry Collins. Two strikes to service, trying to get that tying run home from third. 
One ball and two strikes. The Dodgers won today, six to two over Colorado. So the Giants know that they have to win to keep pace with the first place Dodgers in the West. The Reds won today, beating Atlanta three to two at Cincinnati. And so the Astros need a victory to remain one game back of Cincinnati in the Central. One and two the count. And of course, everybody cognizant that there may well be a strike after games played this Thursday. Teams up near the top would like to be on top if, in fact, the strike hits because nobody knows how long it will last. Where did you hear this about a strike? <laughs> I, keep, I keep wishing it was a nightmare, Joe. But I dreamed it. I keep thinking, forget about it, maybe it'll go away. Okay. It's the last I'll mention. All right. Now, you see Cincinnati, 20 games over 500. So the Astros, with a win, would go back to one game out. Or would fall to two games back if the Giants uh, won this ball game. Central turned into quite a race and a great race going over in the the East. Although Montreal is starting to open up some uh, ground now between themselves and Atlanta. Strike three. Service goes down chasing the slider. And he's unable to get Gonzalez home from third. And that is basically Billy Swift's strikeout pitch. He has a good sinker, but he has a great hard-breaking slider. Now watch this slider. See that ball right there is in the middle of the plate. Now it starts to dive away. And Service is fooled by it. He also struck Bagwell out looking with a breaking ball over the outside corner. Well, that's one of the reasons that Billy Swift was 21 and 8. Last year, he and John Burkett give the Giants a great combination in their rotation. Here's Andujar Cedeno, swung at a bad one, strike one. Cedeno hitting 271, nine homers, 49 batted in, and he's got 26 doubles. Pretty good hitter hitting eighth in the order there. The infield back, normal depth now. Two to one, the Giants ahead. There is Gonzalez at third. What was he thinking there, Joe? Well, oh, and to the count. Looked like it was a good sinking fastball running in on him from Billy Swift. He tried to check his swing and got a piece of it. So just good stuff by Billy Swift. I think so. Billy Air occasionally will throw that fastball and it'll just explode in on the right-handed hitter. He used to shatter a lot more bats than he does now. But he really does have a very good sinking fastball and it really runs in on the right-hander. Billy Swift, one of the best pitchers ever out of South Portland, Maine. Just off the outside. One ball and two strikes. Played for John Winkin at the University of Maine for the Black Bears. And has become quite a pitcher. The Giants made him a starter after they picked him up in the Kevin Mitchell deal from Seattle. 39 and 18 since coming to the Giants. Outside with a fastball, two and two the count. He's 32 years of age and comes from a rather large family, one of 15 children. Of course, he has two children of his own. Man, I'd love to attend one of their family reunions. Way outside of that, we'll get the tying run home. Here comes Gonzalez. It's tied up. Well, Billy Swift was making sure that he didn't hang the breaking ball in the middle of the plate, and he got a little too far away. And becomes a wild pitch, and Gonzalez scores the tying run. Now watch, this is a breaking ball away, and he wants to make sure that he doesn't hang it. He holds on to it a little too long, and really Manwaring tries to get out there, but he just can't. That's real wide. Two to two now, two down. Darren Lewis in right center. And that's the inning. So the Astros get them both back. Top of the order coming with the Giants. Lewis Clayton and then Barry Bonds. It's two to two. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by the more than 800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And now Sunday Night Baseball from the Houston Astrodome, the house that Joe Morgan built. 
continues. <laughs> Top of the order for the Giants. This is John Miller, Joe's partner. Here is Darren Lewis, and he takes a call. So nice to be working with you again, Joe. Yeah, you're right. We missed two weeks in a row, didn't I, we? I worked with uh, a guy named Buck Martinez last week. And I worked with Sean McDonough the week before. You did? Yes. <laughs> oh, you were on vacation in the Bahamas or someplace. <laughs> And the pitch is inside for a ball. One ball and one strike. And in the Bahamas, they all said, aren't you Joe Morgan's partner? <laughs> Darren Lewis grounded a third his first time. John Miller, Joe Morgan, your Sunday night telecasters. And that's a ball outside. One, uh, two balls, one strike to Darren Lewis. Royce Clayton is on deck. And then Barry Bonds will be coming up third in the inning. Next Sunday, we have one of these either or scenarios. Yes. Through the middle, base hit. First hit of the game for Darren Lewis. Next Sunday night, we will be, hopefully, at Yankee Stadium. And number 19, Paul Molitor. And the Blue Jays will take on the Yankees. Paul O'Neill, Don Mattingly, Wade Boggs and company, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, or just in case we might be at Tim McCarver Stadium. Watch Michael Jordan and the Birmingham Barons take on the Memphis Chicks. We will have a game one way or the other. All you need to do is tune us in at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. Royce Clayton shows bunt, takes a curveball too low. One ball to no strikes. Clayton flying to left his first time. That means I have to cancel my golf outing. I had planned to go over to St. Andrews next week, huh? A little, I better not go. Huh? <laughs> There's Wendell Kim, the third base coach for the Giants. Come on, we know you were just kidding. Just kidding. Barry Bonds on deck for the Giants. Two to two in the third inning. Michael Jordan had a home run the other day. I'm still rooting for him. I think we all are. So if there's no big league action next Sunday, we'll get a look at Michael Jordan and the Birmingham Barons in Memphis and see what other uh, talent is down there at the double-A level. Be a little bit like a scouting trip, huh? Yes, I'll bring my radar gun. Into left center. Gonzalez, he got there. One away, Barry Bonds coming up. John, Barry Bonds is a good example of the sluggers today. In the first thing, here's a fastball away, and he just takes it the other way over the left field wall. A lot of hitters now are hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Last night, Matt Williams hit a home run into right center field. So you've got a situation now where your sluggers are really going the other way with pitches. And that's made them much better hitters for doing so. Again, 14 homers for Barry Bonds in the last 21 games. And all of a sudden, Barry Bonds is in the, uh, the thick of the MVP race. As you would expect. Well, the runner was not going, but Service thought that he was. Well, he bluffed, and Service came up ready to fire. And luckily, someone made him hold up. You know, watch Darren. There he breaks from first base. And Service, of course, aware that Lewis will steal a base, is ready to fire. He has not had a very good uh, success ratio in throwing out would-be base dealers. That's why you get jumpy back there, John. Darren Lewis has stolen 28 times to lead the Giants in that category. Also, uh, Barry Bonds with 26 deals. Barry's going for the 40-40. He says it was almost like a challenge. He says he probably will have to meet 40-40, the way Bagwell has been going, to have a shot at the MVP award again. Might help if the Giants win their division, too. Yeah. And, uh, because Bagwell and the Astros, of course, are very close to the Cincinnati Reds. He says that uh, right now he looks at it as a three-way race. Bagwell, his teammate Matt Williams, and himself. He says uh, with that kind of competition, if he finishes in the top three in the MVP uh, voting this year, he'll feel like that was uh, a very good year. 
There goes Lewis. Service throws. Not nearly in time. Late slide there by Lewis also. That's what happens sometimes on AstroTurf. The cutout makes you take that extra step to make sure you get past the, the cutout and you overslide the bag. I've seen it happen quite often. Now watch he'll slide really late here. He's got the throw beaten very easily. Now watch, see, he takes one more step right there and he slides hard into that bag. He's gonna have to take start his slide just a little sooner. And I don't think you can blame uh, Scott Service for that one. Uh, Doug Graybeck let Lewis get a great jump. Oh, and two to Bonds, just off the outside. Outrage by the fans here in Houston. You know, Barry Bonds told Joe and I before the game that he has always hit Drebeck well, so we yes. looked it up. Yeah. He is 8 for 13 in his career against his former teammate, Doug Drebeck. The home run tonight, the first, though. Down and in, 2 and 2. Well, that's interesting because as teammates, you both know each other very well. Bonds knows what Drebeck's best pitches are and where he wants to pitch left-handers. And Drayback has seen how some people have been able to get Barry Bonds out over the years. Very few people have been able to get him out consistently, but I'm sure Drayback saw a pattern there. <laughs> two and two the count. One out. Struck him out. This appears to be one of those backup sliders. See, it's supposed to be a slider in to see it breaks over the outside corner. A lot of people call it a backdoor slider. You see it spinning a lot. Barry thought the ball was going to break a little bit more towards him than it did. And then at the last second, he has to go out and try to get it, and he couldn't find it. Good pitch there by Drabeck, but you can see the target was set up to be a slider inside. So here now is Matt Williams, 42 home runs. He lined out to the second baseman his first time tonight. All the way now, Roger Maris, as we said earlier, hit number 42 in game number 114. The year he finished with 61, but he also began a streak there with that home run where he hit seven homers in the next five games. So by the time he played 119 games he had 48 home runs. So this could be a place where Matt Williams could start to fall behind Maris. All of which Williams just kind of downplays the whole notion. He says he can't even imagine 61 home runs. Lewis at second he's the possible go ahead run two down. And the count goes to one ball and one strike now. It's interesting with Bonds hitting third and then Williams and then Strawberry. Jim Fragosi, I think, put it best, Joe, about Bonds hitting third right. instead of fifth. He says, hey, before, I had a place I could put him. Right. He says, now, I have nowhere to put him. We have to pitch to him with those other guys coming up. Well, that's why he's the best third place hitter in the league. One and one to Matt Williams. Well, he chased a bad one there. That one seemed to fool the catcher service, and he, he must have gotten crossed up on the pitch. He was going to talk to Drabeck about it. Well, he had to be looking for a breaking ball, or he wouldn't have caught it. So he was probably thinking it was going to be a curveball, and this is a slider. See, he's, see there, yeah, it is. He thought it was going to be a, a curveball because when he drops his glove all the way down, you try to cup the curveball in. You catch the curveball with the bottom of your hand facing down, and that was a slider, of course. If he was looking for a break a curveball and that would have been a fastball he would have never been able to catch it. By the way Babe Ruth we mentioned Maris. Babe Ruth had 42 home runs by the 125th game in 1927. The Ruth of course hit an amazing number of home runs very late that year. That's where he makes up ground on his challenges. Matt Williams chasing the Babe. And Roger Maris right now. One and two the count. High soaring fly ball that will stay in the ballpark. Tiny Felder. And that is the inning. Good work by Drebeck getting the big guns with the man out there. Drebeck will be coming up when we return. Sunday night baseball from Houston. John Miller, Joe Morgan with you. Giants two, Astros two. A new addition to the Astrodome this year is the hand-operated scoreboard, and there's the fellow out there in right field posting 
a zero for Boston in the 12th inning. Meaning that game is over. Cleveland in 12 innings has defeated Boston with that five run 12 15 to 10. Here's Doug Grayback. Strike one Grayback. We'll be followed by leadoff man Craig Biggio and then Steve Finley. Two to two the score here. So Cleveland got a split in that doubleheader with Boston over in the American League Central. Foul ball back beneath us and it is 0-2 to Drayback. And Chicago defeated California in extra innings in Anaheim. 10 to 5 also with a big five run rally in the 12th. So Chicago now leads Cleveland by one full game in the Central of the American League. That's a base hit for Drayback. Biggio's coming up, and we're going to send it to Linda Cohn. Thanks, John. At Riverfront, Kevin Mitchell helped make Atlanta's Kent Merker a loser. Mitch's third homer in his last four games, 30th overall, the most for him since 90 when he was a Giant. So the Reds now lead the Astros by a game and a half. The Dodgers won. They lead the Giants by four and a half, and the Braves now six back of Montreal. John, Joe? All right, Linda. And on Sunday Night Baseball, we'll see Brett Butler and the Dodgers and Kevin Mitchell and those Reds. 7.30, 4.30 Eastern, the first half of our Wednesday night doubleheader. And Kevin Mitchell coming on big time and saying that he wants to come back to the Giants next year. Well, I think the Reds have made him upset by when they signed Ron Gant. They told him that he, they weren't going to re-sign him, basically. That's the way he feels. Therefore, he feels he's got to find a new home next year. Should be a lot of people wanting Kevin Mitchell on their ball club. Well, if uh, the Giants had him, they'd have Bonds, Williams, Strawberry, and Kevin Mitchell. That'd be uh, pretty imposing. And yeah, where would they all hit? Somebody's got to hit six. Swift's going to have to hurry. No play. He juggled it. It was going to be questionable whether he's going to get Biggio anyway. Biggio's very fast. And it will be scored as a base hit for Biggio. Well, I talked about the fact Billy Swift's a good fielding pitcher. Now he gets off the mound very quickly because this was going to be a very difficult play for Matt Williams. Now Billy Swift gets there but he can't come up with it. Can't field it on the hop because he knows as you mentioned he had to hurry. All right now here's a spot where you're get a chance to manage the Houston Astros for Terry Collins all right right Here's Steve Finley two on and nobody on you've got Bagwell up next right do you bunt Finley to try to move the runners over if you do you leave first base open it an opportunity for the guy to pitch around Bagwell so if you're the manager if you're Terry Collins that man what do you do are you asking me I'm giving you the opportunity. Okay, I'm, not, opportunity. I'm not telling you you have to say. Okay, I'll wait till after the pitch. <laughs> no, I let him hit, John. <laughs> hey, I think just he like Terry Collins. Yeah, I think he should. One ball and no strikes. Well, at number one, he's not a bad hitter. He's left-handed swinging. Right. And why do something that might just take the bat right out of uh, Biggio's, or rather, uh, Bagwell's hand? There's Bagwell on deck. Two to two. Two men on, nobody out. Jeff Bagwell leading the planet in RBI. Well, now they bunt. Martinez, hurry up, just in time. Patterson covering. In fact, that's exactly what I would have done, John. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that you might. Yeah, I changed my mind, you know, after the first pitch, I decided I'd better bunt him over. Now, Dusty Baker's going out to talk to Billy Swift, and I think he wants to get some input and give his input to Billy. He wants Billy to tell him how he feels pitching to Bagwell, and he wants to tell him exactly how he wants Bagwell pitched if they decide to pitch to him. Let's take a look at Bagwell's first at bat. I said they had to change something, try to pitch him inside. Well, that's as, about as far inside as you can get, and then go away with a breaking ball, and that's exactly what Billy Swift does, and he strikes him out. Those are two very good pitches. If you make any mistakes, Bagwell will hurt you. So you have to decide whether it's worth the risk involved just to get him out, or if you want to just go ahead and put him on first base. Well, he's coming up now with Graybeck over at third base and Biggio over at second base. Well, they're going to pitch to him because they're playing the infield halfway. That means they're going to go after Bagwell. Bagwell struck out looking, as we just saw, in his first at bat. 115 RBIs, more than one per game. 
In for a strike. I think the pitch, one pitch that has changed his whole outlook of this game was the pitch he threw to Bagwell inside that he had to get, fall down to get out of the way of and fouled him, fouled off. That pitch there was set up by that pitch. His strikeout was set up by that pitch. That pitch did a lot for Billy Swift's pitch pattern to Bagwell. Uh, don't forget Ken Caminiti is on deck. Look out. And that pitch there will do a little bit more for his pitch pattern. I don't think Billy Swift was throwing at Bagwell. I, I doubt it. If we take another look at this pitch, I think you'll see that ball is not as far inside as you think. See, Bagwell dives in, and that pitch is just off the plate inside. Now watch. See, Bagwell starts in, and that makes it look like the ball is way inside. But that's the way Bagwell hits. One ball, one strike. Two to two the score. Runners at second and third. Right through the middle base hit. Graybeck scores. Here comes Biggio being held. The throw goes through. Safe at second base. The throw went through even though Biggio had stopped. And Bagwell took second. His 116th RBI. Three to two, Houston. Well, Jeff Bagwell is a very good hitter. And if you make any mistakes, he's going to make you pay. This ball is in the middle of the plate. This is not where he's trying to throw it. It's a fastball in the middle of the plate, and he lines it right back through the middle for a base hit. There you take a look at the runners. Dre back, of course, scores easily. And there, Vigio comes flying around third. They hold him, but they're not able to cut the ball off in time, and Bagwell goes to second. Here is Caminiti. Runners at second and third. The infield in halfway again. That's a base hit down the right field line. Biggio scores. Here comes Bagwell. He scores. A single for Caminiti. Five to two, Houston. One of the reasons that Dusty Baker chose to pitch the bag well because Caminetti was behind him. He's a left-handed hitter and he's swinging the bat well. Again, let's see. They try to give the signal to get this pitch up. It is not up. He's a low ball hitter, as I said the first time. And there's another low pitch, and he lines it to right field. You can see Manwaring standing up, telling him to throw the pitch pitch up. He did not get it up. So two mistakes, not real mistakes, but two bad pitch locations here have cost Billy Swift three runs. And Caminiti now with 73 RBIs for the year. He's back to the bag at first. Well, before the game, I was talking to a Bagwell on the bench, and Caminiti came by, and I said, and here's Ken Caminiti. With his protection, you're getting all of these RBIs. And Bagwell immediately agreed, but Caminiti kind of laughed it off as if his presence would have anything to do with it. But Bagwell went into the fact that uh, Caminiti's just a good hitter. I mean, he's not a big home run hitter or anything else, but he's just a good hitter, and he feels that he gets pitches to hit in big spots with Caminiti hitting behind him, and we get an idea as just what Caminiti is capable of here. Well, he's also a switch hitter, so that makes him a perfect guy to, to protect someone. Luis Gonzalez. One ball, one strike. He doubled home around his first time. And he's got 64 RBIs. Actually, the three of them, Caminiti, Bagwell, and Gonzalez, have 253 RBIs between the three of them. Obviously, most of those off the bat of Bagwell. But nonetheless, there's only one trio in the majors that's put together more RBIs than these three. And that's Frank Thomas. Julio Franco and uh, Robin Ventura with the White Sox over in the American League. And plus, I guess if you're Caminiti or Luis Gonzalez sitting after a guy who's driving in 116 runs at this point, how many guys are there left for you to drive in? <laughs> Dave Martinez and uh, Gonzalez is out number two. Caminiti moving up to second.
Mike Felder coming up now. Three runs in for Houston. And the Giants had an opportunity in the second. And they had runners at second and third and one out and came out of it with just one run. Then they had a man at second in the third and didn't get anybody home. Now Houston jumping all over Billy Swift with its opportunity here in the last of the third. Five to two, Houston ahead. All and one to Mike Felder. Giants have lost five in a row. They got hammered at Candlestick Park this week by Cincinnati. Even Barry Bonds three home runs in a game last Tuesday wasn't enough to beat the Reds. And now they come to Houston. They've lost the first two games here and they're trailing five to two already tonight. The Giants I guess it's no surprise to see them uh, getting knocked around by the powers in the central. They just have not done well against the central at all. Foul ball right past third base coach Matt Galani. 0-2 to count. <laughs> Dusty Baker. His team was the talk of baseball last year. They won 103 games for year it just has not been there for the Giants the only reason the Giants even with that 17 and 4 stretch they made after they picked up strawberry the only reason that created excitement was because of the realignment Atlanta was no longer in the division Cincinnati Houston were no longer in the division and the Dodgers who were still there were not doing that much better than the Giants Giants would be, what, 14 games out or so under the old alignment. Into shadow center. Base hit for Felder. Here comes Caminetti. The throw by Lewis. The throw back to second. Six to two, Houston. Well, it's bad enough for a base hit to occur and driving a run with two outs, but to throw the ball all the way through uh, over the cutoff man's head allows another runner to go into scoring position. It's a good pitch by Billy Swift. Tiny Felder just flips it in the center field, bloops it for a single. No chance to get Caminetti, but the throw goes all the way to the catcher, and by the time he gets it back to second base, Felder's already at second base. You have to throw the ball down so the cutoff man can cut it off. And just put one more runner into scoring position. 13th RBI of the year for Felder. Four runs have scored. And it is 6-2 Houston now. We're still in the third inning. And the Giants' bullpen is going to get busy now. Well, Scott Service. Strike one swinging. Well, Dusty Baker is staying with Billy Swift so long simply because he does not want to get into that bullpen. Got a lot of guys down there with tired arms and guys that have not performed as well as he would like. So you're staying, he's staying a little longer with Swift than he might normally stay because this is not the Billy Swift that he's used to seeing out there. Well, in the last four games before tonight, yeah. the Giants had allowed 46 runs. Almost 12 per game. So they're also giving them up out of the bullpen as well. Houston was a winner here. Last night, 8 to 7, 12 to 4 on Friday was the Houston margin of victory. Cincinnati beat the Giants Wednesday, 17 to 4, and Tuesday beat them 9 to 7. Struck him out, and just like that, the inning is over. Service down for the second time on strikes. 6 to 2, Houston. Darrell Strawberry will be coming up with the Giants as we head back at the Astrodome. 6 to 2 Houston ahead. Sunday night baseball. And the Giants are looking up at a tall deficit once again. Next Sunday, strike permitting the World Champion Blue Jays and the New York Yankees, the hottest team in baseball right now. 
former monitor of the Jays, Joe Carter, Roberto Alomar, Paul O'Neill, Don Mattingly, and the New York Yankees, Wade Boggs, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Now, if we cannot bring you that, we'll bring you Michael Jordan and his Birmingham Barons facing the Memphis Chicks from Memphis, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. One way or the other, we'll have baseball for you. Next week, I support Lisa like I support the strikes. I guess that's Elvis speaking. Get a, get a little bit more up on my Elvis uh, lore here, Joe. Darryl Strawberry hit that one pretty well, but Luis Gonzalez with room to grab it. One away. Doug Grayback out front here, six to two now, as Dave Martinez will come up. Strawberry and walked and scored a run back in the second inning. So Grayback got through some tough times there in the second and third innings. Now he has a big lead, which he partially helped to get with his leadoff single in the third inning. That started a four-run rally for the Astros. Dave Martinez singled his first time. And the curveball in there. Strike one. Doug Drabeck looking for his 12th win of the year. Then the ace for the Astros. And he was, of course, for many years on some very good ball clubs, the ace of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Took a bad hop up the seam. Cedeno got him. Right where the turf meets the dirt near second base. The ball hit that area and took a high hop. Not only that, John, when you have a ball coming off acid turf with that spin on it and it hits the dirt, a lot of times you will get an erratic hop. Now watch it hits right where you talked about, right at the edge. So Daniel shows a real strong arm here. I mean, he fires this ball to first base. And he retires Martinez. Here's John Patterson. Two down, nobody on. Here in the fourth. Fastball misses. Patterson is 0 for 1. Drainbeck coming back here to Houston. And I mean coming back because he's from this area. From Victoria, Texas. Went to uh, St. Joseph's High School in Victoria, and he was all state. And in Texas, when you're all state, that's a big state. That's a big state. He was all state in baseball and also in football and in track. Then he went to the University of Houston. Bagwell to Drebeck. And that is the inning. The Giants go down in order for the first time. Six to two Astros. We go to the last of the four. Sunday night baseball from the house that Joe Morgan built. The Houston Astrodome. Joe used to hit a lot of foul ball home runs into that area when he was here. Hey, they're going to call it the house that Bagwell built the way he's going now. He is now the franchise player here in Houston. Here's Cedeno. Ground ball foul to Matt Galati, the third base coach. Six to two, the Astros ahead as we start the last half of the fourth inning. And at this point, for Billy Swift, I mean, it's not going to be a pretty pitching line for him. It's not going to help his earned run average. The slider outside, but he can help his ball club two different ways here by tightening up. One, just giving him the innings to let the bullpen uh, get rested a little bit. And also, if he can hold him down, give the Giants a shot to get back into this game. The bunt. to let it roll. Foul. Well, the Giants made a late surge in last night's ball game. They were trailing eight to four and ended up eight to seven. At three in the ninth. Yeah, and that was had the tying run thrown out at third with one out. So the Giants have bounced back. And they have power enough to do that. When you fall behind by three or more runs, you need power to get back into the ball game. And the Giants, of course, have some guys in the middle of their lineup that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. But the way they were hitting before they got strawberry. A deficit like this would have just been a little hopeless. Yeah. Right. Because if, when you have two guys like Matt Williams and Barry Bonds, a pitcher does not have to pitch to both of them. When you have three guys in the lineup, you have to pitch to two of the three. One and two the count. And a foul off to the right. It is one ball and two strikes. 
to Anduja Cedeno. The Astros with a four run third inning. The first run of the four driven in by Jeff Bagwell just moments after he had been decked. A pitch right near his chin. He got right back up in the very next pitch he drilled back through the box. Driving in the go ahead run. One ball and two strikes his 116th run battered in now. The all time record for RBIs is 190 by Hack Wilson. Nobody's ever really come close to that. But Hack Wilson after this same number of games had 122 RBIs only six more than what Bagwell has. Strike three. Speaking of Bagwell we had a chance to talk with him before the game and we asked him what he thought some of the reasons were for his success. I see a lot of situations I come up to hit. You know, and I get through the A-B, and I'm 3-1, I'm 2-0, I'm 3-0, and anybody can hit in those situations. Um, there's, there's just so many breaking balls being thrown now. Uh, and guys have a tough time throwing breaking balls for strikes a lot. The fastball isn't used that much. The inside part of the plate isn't established, and uh, it makes it easier to hit. Well, he may change that inside part of the plate thing after tonight's ball game, but he's exactly correct there, John, in that a lot of pitchers are throwing breaking balls and falling behind in the count early. Doug Gray back the hitter ball too but a very revealing look at Jeff Bagwell too because I think no matter what you talk about with Bagwell and his success he seems to be very self-effacing about it. But it also shows that he's very smart too John. He knows exactly what's happening up there in the batter's box. And I talked to Larry Durker who is the uh, radio broadcaster for the Astros and a former teammate of mine. He said he's never seen a guy get as many good pitches to hit as Bagwell has when he's going as well as Bagwell is. But what he's Bagwell just said is the reason for that. They get behind and have to come in. Three and one out of Graybeck. Graybeck single in the third starting that four run rally. One out nobody on in the four. Bagwell from New England. He's a native uh, Bostonian. And Graybeck the native Texan is two for two tonight. That's his 14th end of the year, so he's not helpless up there. Well, when you see Billy Swift giving up a lot of line drives and a lot of balls hit in the air, you know he's getting the ball up, and you can see that fastball was up. Watch his belt high, and for a sinker ball pitcher, that is real high. Billy Swift usually throws the ball between the belt and the knees, sinking, and he gets a lot of ground balls. That ball there did not move very much, and it was up in the zone. So here is leadoff man Craig Biggio. Raybeck at first, one out. Strike one. Biggio is grounded to third. And then he got an infield hit in the third inning. A ball that Swift might have had a chance to throw him out had he been able to field the ball cleanly, but he could not. And John, I think you want to give Biggio a lot of credit in that he remember he was a catcher. He moved to second base and he's learned to play second base very well. He's worked very hard. Over the middle. Base hit. Grayback will stop at second. Biggio with his second hit. And that's what we're talking about. This place is kind of built for a guy like Biggio. He puts the ball in place and play. There's a sinker. You see the rotation moving in toward Biggio and the ground ball up the middle. Royce Clayton can't flag it down. He's talking before the game with Drabeck and Biggio. And the subject of turf came up. And they both agreed that the turf here at the Astrodome was the slowest turf in the National League. And I said, is that good? And Drabeck said, yes. And Biggio said, no. <laughs> Well, that's a hitter's perspective, always different than a pitcher's. That's Dick Pohl, the pitching coach, coming out to talk to Swift. I think he just wants to find out how he feels now. I would, wouldn't imagine he feels too good. Down six to two. And uh, Pat Gomez, the young left-hander up in the Giants' bullpen. Don't forget now, tomorrow night on ESPN, Outside the Lines. Join ESPN at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific for a special edition of Outside the Lines, Baseball and American Portrait. ESPN's Peter Gammons will be joined by Bob Costas, author David Halberstam, and Ozzie Smith.
in a roundtable discussion as they take a look at the state of baseball today. That's tomorrow night at 7.30 right here on ESPN. Well, you know, Joe, I have a few uh, things I'd like to get off my chest, too. Maybe I ought to show up. I, I, was, I was thinking the same thing, John. I was thinking maybe you ought to show up. We'll have a few fireworks in this show tomorrow night. Yeah, tell them the real facts, huh? <laughs> That's right. We'll let them talk the first half of the show, then we'll right, come then on. We'll take over, right? Yeah. Steve Finley. We could have uh, our own show right after that. They could have outside the lines, and you and I could come on with outside their minds. <laughs> well, I think we're kind of represented there because I think you're along the lines of Bob Costas thinking about yes. the way baseball is. And Bob is a very sharp and, and very intelligent fellow. Yes, he I'm is. Glad you likened me to him. <laughs> And Ozzy Smith kind of has my opinion about the game, so we're all we're represented. Two and zero, the count to Finley. And it's a foul ball. Two and one. Bullpen activity with the Giants. The Astros with two men on, one man out. They are leading six to two in the fourth inning. There is a Dave Berber who was up earlier, the right-hander, along with Gomez, the left-hander. Dusty Baker. They could just win 51 more games this year, Joe. In their last 51 games, they would equal last year's final record. You don't want to put that kind of pressure on them, do you? Well, I just mean to show you what a great year they had last year. Deep in the center, Darren Lewis way back. He'll have to. That's, that's, uh, I don't know how that hit ball. something out there, and it will be an automatic double. Something weird happened on that one, Joe. Now you built this ballpark. Tell me what happened. Well, it was bigger when I built it. <laughs> and that would have never bounced over. Uh, you see, it's 400 feet. It used to be 410. They moved the fences in. And left center field is 375 now, where it used to be 390. That's a low fastball lined over the head of Darren Lewis. And it just bounces over the wall. It must have hit the side of the wall and then bounced over. And they're booing because Bagwell's not going to get a chance to hit. Bagwell being walked intentionally here. It is now 7 to 2 for Houston with uh, Biggio at third and Finley at second. And now Bagwell will go to first to load the bases. Well, Dusty chose to pitch to him in this situation last time up in he single to center field. And Dusty says, I'm not going to pitch to you again with runners at second and third and one out. In fact, he's going not going to let him pitch to Caminetti either. Well, Caminetti's two for two tonight with two RBIs against him. And this one uh, is slipping away from the Giants early. Seven to two Houston and Dusty Baker. Patience is by putting a translucent root up second in the fifth inning. There's Pat Gomez, the new pitcher. He'll hit in uh, Patterson's spot. Patterson now out of the game. Gomez will be due up ninth in the next go round. Gomez, the young lefty, on for the Giants. And all he's got to do, Joe, is get out of a base loaded one out jam with Ken Caminiti up there. And actually, Caminiti hitting from his best side. He has more power from the right side. He's also been a better hitter over his career from the right side. And there's the noise meter. Biggio at third, Finley at second, and Bagwell at first. Ken Caminiti hitting 286. And it's back to the screen, strike one. If you watch Caminetti hit, you can see his bat is much quicker from the right side. He's a stronger hitter from the right side. And Dusty wanted him on the right side because it's obviously easier to double him up. And the changeup outside. Because he couldn't have liked what he'd seen of Swift. Caminetti batting left-handed against Swift. Right. 
Ken Caminiti. He's uh, one of the old guys in this ball club. He's been around a long time. He's from California. Went to college in the Bay Area, San Jose State. Let's see if they can get two on this one. Clayton the second one. Scarsoni to first, a double play. That's the way it worked all through the 1993 season when Dusty Baker would make a move. Seven to two Houston at the end of four. East ball. The Giants and the Astros. The Astros leading seven to two back of Doug Grayback. He throws a call strike to Kurt Manwaring. Top of the fifth inning. Manwaring had his uh, top season by far last year, hitting 275 with 49 batted in. Along the right field line. That's in there. Felder cuts it off. Manwaring's going to try for second. And he is out at second. Down seven to two. Not the the best thinking there by Manwaring. But, but what a great throw by Tiny Felder. Well, if you're Dusty Baker, you like to see your players hustle, but this is a play that should not have been made. Manwaring hits the ball down the right field line. They play him that way. Now Tiny Felder gets it on the first hop. Right now he should be holding back and say, well, it's seven to two. My run doesn't mean that much. And he's out by quite a bit as the throw by Felder is right on the money. Was a very good play by Felder. Now Scarsoni. Caminiti. Out number two. Two down and Darren Lewis coming up. This giant team under uh, Dusty Baker since the arrival of Strawberry. They had that hot stretch. He's had a lot of difficulties. And he is appreciative of his opportunity to play for the Giants, he told us. I am very fortunate to, to be, be here today and, and speaking with you guys today. As uh, um, far as um, my baseball skills and as far as just uh, life in general. I think uh, after looking over the whole situation and, and realizing what I have been through, um, it's, it's part of what, what life is about and people deal with. And you know, no one's responsible for it but me. And I'll take full responsibility. And, uh, I'm just thankful that I have an opportunity for baseball game. And yeah, those are words I think to remember, and words you want to hear from Daryl Strawberry. I take full responsibility. One and one to Darren Lewis. And now one and two. Lewis is one for two in the game. The, the Dodgers, for their part, were counting on Strawberry. He'd gone all through the spring with them, had a, an excellent spring. And it was a terrible letdown to that entire ball club to have lost Strawberry just before opening day the way they did. But now that he's gone through the rehab, admitted his uh, problem, done something about it, even uh, Tommy Lasorda and some of the Dodgers who were very critical of Darrell, before wishing him luck and uh, hoping for the best for Daryl Strawberry. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Daryl has changed his attitude toward life. I mean, if you talk to him now, he looks you in the eye. Whereas before, he was a little, you know, hesitant. I think he has definitely made a change, and hopefully, he will stay that way. Ball four to Darren Lewis. The second walk allowed by. Doug Grayback. Two down runner at first, and here is Royce Clayton. Twice he has flied out. And if he can get aboard here, that would uh, keep the inning going for Barry Bonds. Well, the last thing you want to do if you were Doug Grayback is walk Darren Lewis with two outs and a five run lead. That's unlike Doug Grayback because he was ahead in the count, and he still ended up walking him. Because the Giants are a ball club that can come back very quickly. Royce Clayton hit a home run here the other night. He's capable of hitting the ball out of the ballpark, although he's not a power hitter. As such, he still can hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's fifth in the club at RBIs with 29. It's not very good. No, it isn't. 
not on an offensive minded ball club especially the Giants last year were very offensive minded they scored runs in bunches and they also had pretty good pitching the pitching wasn't nearly as poor as people thought it was last year it just wasn't up to the offense well, they had the big two in the rotation Burkett and the Swift and they had the great closer in the bullpen with a pretty strong bullpen. Yeah. Mike Rod Jackson. Beck the closer and then the Jackson in front of him. John you very rarely do you find teams now with two more than two guys capable of winning 20 ball games. The Giants had Swift and Burkett. Not a lot of teams have that potential with their starting pitch. Of course that man the great closer last year. Rod Beck what a year he had. There goes Lewis right to Caminiti. And he throws out Clayton and Barry Bonds will have to lead off the next inning. Halfway through it, Astros seven, Giants two. From the Astrodome, the house that Joe Morgan built. Everywhere you go, you see Joe Morgan in this ballpark. One of the great Astros in the Hall of Fame. And I mean everywhere. Look at that. What a tribute to Joe. Half of the rooftop emblazoned <laughs> with a picture of Joe as a member of the Astros. <laughs> I mean, I was just astounded when I saw that. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Seven to two, the Astros leading the Giants almost as if they're showing off <laughs> for the first homegrown Astro ever to make the Hall of Fame, Joe Morgan. Here is Luis Gonzalez. He doubled homer on his first time and the ground to, to first base in the third. He's one for two. Pat Gomez in relief of Billy Swift throws him a called strike. That was a young pitcher too, John. <laughs> Photograph he used there. And that's a giant photo up on the roof like that. <laughs> and that's a ball. Almost as big as the one in Nolan Ryan they had at Texas Stadium, right? In Arlington. <laughs> Gonzalez followed by Felder and then Service here in the fifth inning. It's up to Pat Gomez to try to hold the Astros right where they are. The Giants can ill afford to give up any more runs. And he's a left hander to face this lineup, especially Gonzalez. He was able to get Caminetti to hit him to the double play, but now he needs to hold him another inning or so. You ever notice how when either Gonzalez or Finley's up, you can't tell which one it is? I mean, these guys look like twin brothers. You're don't exactly they? right. They, they're batting styles. And I said that to them before the game. They said, you know, everybody says that. I mean, they get mail for each other. They get asked for autographs by kids. And uh, somebody will ask Luis Gonzalez and say, Steve, right. can I have your autograph? <laughs> now, see, Steve Finley said one of the reasons he grew that little goatee was to distinguish himself from Gonzalez. I remember I made the mistake earlier in the ballgame. Gonzalez hit the double to drive in the run, and I said it was Finley because it looked just like Finley at the plate and when he took off for first base. I mean, they just have uh, strikingly similar features. That's a long high drive deep into right center field. Strawberry back, and he makes the catch. Gonzalez is out number one here in the fifth inning here in the house that Joe Morgan built the Houston Astrodome now this ballpark opened in 1965 and before they ever played a regular season game here the Astros played a couple of games against uh, their minor league ball club but even before that look at that 1963 Joe they brought up some of their young talent and started nine rookies in a game you're right including Jimmy Wynn, Rusty Staub, Jerry Grody, and Joe Morgan. <laughs> All the way back in 63. How old were you there? 15? <laughs> no, a little older. He had a work permit by then. <laughs> Tiny Felder takes ball one. You're right. That was an all-rookie team started that game. Against the Mets, if I remember correctly. And how'd you do? You would have to ask me that, huh? Uh, Must not have been good. You have Actually, the, we played well. I can't remember whether we won or not, but remember, we were playing the Mets. <laughs> the well, Mets in those days were. That was actually 69, huh? Well, now, look at this. We found this out of the paper. April 8, 1965. Morgan became the first Astro to hit a home run in competition. Matt Williams knocks it down. 
and throws out the speedy Felder. I'm glad you found that, John, because they've been giving credit to some guy. I don't even know who he is, Mickey Mantle. Well, something. look at that. It, uh, the first to set off the electrical display on the big scoreboard in center field. And you, you've always told us about that. I but everybody keeps that. saying Mickey Mantle because that was the first exhibition game played. right here. In fact, here it is. That was uh, a couple of days later. I'd already trotted around when Mickey started his job. I'd already made it. Look, they had the grass there at the Astrodome <laughs> at that time. You're right. Here is Scott Service. Two down and nobody on. That's a fair ball. Strawberry having to give chase. He has trouble in the corner. Service will hold as Strawberry digs it out. This is a different Astro ball club than you used to. A lot of guys used to slap the ball, chop the ball, and run. Now they find the gaps. They get a lot of extra base hits. They hit the ball hard. And Strawberry chases this ball into the corner. It doesn't come out. He has to go in and get it, but Service has an easy double. Now they're going to walk Cedeno with first base open and two down to get to Doug Drabeck, although Drabeck is two for two in this game. And there's another wide one from Gomez. Well, Drayback is two for two, but he hasn't faced a left hand. Tell you what, he could have had 12 for his last 12, <laughs> and they'd walk this guy right now. <laughs> and there's ball four, so that puts him out. Now, I'm getting back to that home run you hit, Joe. All right. First one of the Astrodome. Clark Nealon of the Houston Post wrote that you were, he said, little Joe Morgan put a touch of history even into an interest squad game with that home run. He said that you lined it. Wait a minute. <laughs> now that is the real Professor Joe Morgan. <laughs> I was you know, trying anything, man, to get off, uh, you know, get some hits. I was trying glasses, anything. <laughs> that was a real nice look, though, for you. <laughs> Drayback pops it foul. And out of play. Well, he definitely thinks he's the hitter. He goes after the first pitch. He's hacking. He's two for two. He's hitting 246 for the year. Two out, two out here in the fifth inning. But your home run was up into the right field orange seats. And that's a pretty good shot. Well, you, had to, hit shot. It, you had to hit it into the seats then. They didn't have an inner fence. You hit it against a left handed and Danny Coombs. All right. Who was with Oklahoma City. And Bob Lillis played in that game right a teammate of yours now a coach for the Giants he had two hits and drove in two runs had a double in that game the next day you guys according to the article we're going to play Oklahoma City again in an intra squad game at 2 30 a test of the new ballpark under daytime conditions and that must have been an interesting day very interesting it didn't test well you in couldn't the see <laughs> The sun was shining through the the rafters, and you could not see fly balls. Very now, don't, well. now, be frank with me. Then. I'm not going to tell anybody. There's That's Bob Lillis Bob on the Lillis, right. Barry, and Bobby Bonds. Did you drop any pop-ups or lose any pop-ups that day? No, because they didn't hit any to me. <laughs> I was like everyone else. I couldn't see them either. Strike three call. Right back down on strikes. Two left. It'll be Bob. Williams and Strawberry coming up. Seven of Thank you. Thank you. John Miller, Joe Morgan from the Astrodome. Seven to two. Houston leading San Francisco. Doug Drabeck. Yeah, with two hits tonight and uh, a big lead in the mound, along only four hits. Well, that card may go up in value here shortly. <laughs> Barry Bonds coming up for the Giants. A home run. But then a strikeout is last time. Well, we talked about the fact they know each other so well. I think Bonds was looking for a slider in where the pitch was supposed to be, and this slider's away. See, the pitch was supposed to be inside, and he got it out over the plate. Bonds couldn't catch up with it. Bonds' home run in the first inning, his 37th of the year. Ball one with the changeup. Mac Williams on deck. Now, Williams and Bonds have hit 79 home runs which is only 14 below the all time National League record for two men on the same team. 
which if the season gets played out, they seem destined to obliterate that record. It's a foul out of play. Two and one to Bond. There's Matt Williams on deck. He's got 42 and Bonds with 37. 79 altogether. The record in the National League set in 1930 by the combination of Hack Wilson and Gabby Hartnett with the Chicago Cubs. Wilson had 56 that year and Hartnett had 37. 93. Strike two on the inside. Now you can see the pattern that Brabeck has with Bonds. He wants to come inside. line and again that pitch was inside the catcher set up on the inside corner and he hit the target that was a fastball and not a breaking ball the all-time record of course for home runs by a, a duo on the same ball club Maris and Mantle in 61 hit 115 and that's foul ball and of course it's interesting because that year Maris was chasing the babe Ended up with 61, and so was Mantle most yes. of the year until he ended up in the hospital in September. He ended up with 54 that year. 61 for Maris, 54 for Mantle. On the same team, Mantle hitting behind Maris. And there was Maris heading for the babe, and never one time was he walked intentionally that year. Which I said <laughs> that tells you right all there. you need to know about yeah. Mickey Mantle. <laughs> now that's the major league record, Marison Mantle, and Wilson and Hartnett with the 30 Cubs. That was the other half. Wilson had 190. And there's the Giants record, close to the National League record. Mays and McCovey in 65. Mays had 52. McCovey 39. Three and two out of bounds. And of course, uh, Marison Mantle in 61 broke the record of Ruth and Garrig. 27 Ruth hit 60 and uh, Gehrig hit 47 and they were neck and neck throughout the year in fact within one of each other going into September when uh, Gehrig stopped hitting home runs and Ruth was just heating up all four to Barry Bonds well Bonds gets the walk leading off the six and now here is Matt Williams to try and cut into that Houston lead as I said before, if you have two hitters in the lineup, two sluggers, you can miss one. You can, like he did there, he pitched around Bond, so to speak, and he would only have to face Matt Williams. But with Strawberry in the lineup, you have to face two of the three. And in this at bat, he's going to have to face Williams and Strawberry. So, Giants lineup a lot stronger now than it was at the beginning of the season. Matt Williams is lying to the second baseman, and he is flying out to shallow right center. There goes Bonds. He won't even throw. What a jump by Bonds, and they could have picked him off. I thought he left it even a little bit too soon there, Joe. Well, he definitely did. Well, he left before Drabeck delivered the ball. <laughs> That's one of the best jumps you'll ever see. I don't think Drabeck thought he was going. See, he's running. Drabeck hasn't even started his motion towards the plate. Maybe he will get 40 for it. Well, that's number 27. One strike to Matt Williams. You get 37 homers and 27 steals now. The only 40 40 man in baseball history. 40 homers and 40 steals. Jose Canseco. And Bond said he almost looked at it as like a challenge because Canseco told him that he'd never do 40 40, meaning Bonds would never do it. I don't think he felt Bonds would hit 40 home runs. One ball, one strike to Williams. I'm going to uh, show you the Jugs gun reading here for a little bit on Doug Graybeck. Give you an idea how hard he throws, but also the way he changes speeds. 85 miles an hour in that last one. See, Matt Williams has not hit well against Graybeck because of the big breaking ball. Slider, one ball and two strikes. Well, he throws the ball in on Matt and then he goes back away with a slider. Pitch before was inside of course and here's the slider breaking out away from Matt.
lot of scouts are critical of the fact you do not see many pitchers pitch like that anymore. In and then out with the breaking ball. In again. Two and two. 87 miles an hour there. All right, so another slider coming up. Well, that's the great thing about pitching in. Now you have the hitter thinking. Well, will he throw me a breaking ball away? And it also opens up the inside part of the plate for you. So it, that pitch gives you a, a, a good pattern to go to. You can either throw a fastball in again, or you can go away with a breaking ball. They're definitely going away. In the dirt. Full countdown, three and two. Well, he can't really afford to walk Matt Williams or even risk a walk here with Daryl Strawberry coming up in a five-run lead. But pitchers do not think that way anymore, John, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't throw another slider here. A lot of times the pitchers say, I'd rather walk him than to have a two-run home run hit in this situation. You see, Matt has always been pretty steady as a uh, home run hitter, but, of course, the big year this year for him already beyond his uh, previous record. Three and two. High in the air to deep center. He'll stay in the park. Finley. Bonds is tagging. Bonds for third. And he makes it. And again, I, as I said, he's not going to give in to Matt Williams, even though the count was three and two and he has a five-run lead. That five-run lead could quickly turn into a four-run lead. A three run lead. So now you see the breaking ball, and he throws him a 3 2 breaking ball away, and he gets it away. Good pitch there by Drebeck. Barry Bonds out third base. He walked, he stole second, he went to third on the fly ball, and now Darrell Strawberry. Strawberry has walked and scored a run, but he has flied out deep to left center. The infield playing Strawberry to pull, and they are deep. The curveball strike and two and one. See how they play him. The shortstop said Daniel way over toward the middle. Biggio at second base is not playing as deep as he normally plays left-handed hitters. Seven to two, Houston ahead. We're in the sixth inning. The Giants trying to come back, and they have a lot of coming back to do in this game. Strawberry. Pretty good home run numbers against Drebeck. About the one for every nine at bats. I remember something Willie May said to me once, John. He said, you fight off the good pitchers and beat up on the other ones. And that's basically what you do. You get your one for four you know, against the good pitchers. And you get your two for four against the average pitchers. And Drebeck would class be classified, as far as I'm concerned, as one of the good pitchers. So 255 average is not bad against Drebeck, plus he has the five home runs. Fans starting to chant Darrell now, almost as if the torn strawberry. Down he goes. Another good pitch there by Drebeck. That pitch is off the plate outside, but he throwed him a variety of breaking balls inside, so he fires this fastball away. He had, he had thrown two breaking balls in, so he fires this one sinker. You can see it's a two-seam fastball sinking away from Drebeck, I mean from Strawberry, and that pitch is well off the plate outside. Good pitch there by Drebeck. So after walking Bonds, Drebeck has gotten Williams. Now he has gotten Strawberry, and there's Bonds still at third base. And here is Dave Martinez, one for two. And the fastball is in there. 88 miles an hour. You see him making a conscious effort on Strawberry and now Martinez to run that fastball away from him. Mark Leonard has come out on deck with the Giants in case Martinez keeps the inning going. And here comes Bonds. So he ends up scoring anyway. After all of that, seven to three now for Houston. I imagine they'll score that as a wild pitch. But maybe not. They're going to score the pass ball. Well, we'll have to take another look at this. It didn't look like a pass ball to me. It still doesn't look like a pass ball. That pitch is behind Martinez. I'm sure Service lost it because he can't see through Martinez. Martinez finally moved out of the way, and Service couldn't catch it.
that's the difference between an earned run and an unearned run. Yeah, unless uh, unless Martinez gets a hit here, right? That run will be scored as unearned. So, and that's probably why the scoring was done like that. I don't. I just don't believe that was a pass ball. I agree with you. Pitch looked pretty wild to me. Looked pretty wild. Over the inside, strike three call. Giants get a run, an unearned run. We go to the last of the six. Biggio, Finley, and Bagwell coming up. John Miller, Joe Morgan, some great pennant races, some individual races for all-time records in baseball, and yet it all might end on Thursday if there's a strike. And Joe, what do you think? Is it going to happen? Well, John, I've been in this game long enough to know as a player, there were a lot of times it went down to the last moment and there was a deal made. You know, it went down to the last day before the strike and you make a deal. I'm certainly hoping that happens again this year. Because I would hate to see baseball interrupted this season because I think baseball has gotten back on track. The fans love what's going on and the players are performing very well. Would be a shame. Here's a new pitcher with the Giants, Dave Berba, facing leadoff man Craig Biggio. Todd uh, Benzinger has also uh, come into the game now. As you see Berba's numbers. So another double switch for the Giants. Here's Benzinger in for Dave Martinez at first. So put Berba in the number six spot in the batting order, Martinez's spot, and put Benzinger in the number seven spot. He'll lead off the next inning. Seven to three. Houston is leading. Interesting uh, article. If you have a chance to check out the New York Times uh, sports section this morning, the Sunday Times. Murray Chass, the uh, baseball columnist for the Times, talked to uh, Peter Angelos, the first year owner of the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, he made a, an interesting proposal which is to, to say that the players don't believe the owners when they say they're losing money. Right. So he has an idea for that. That's a foul. He said, and this is quoting from Murray Chess's column, quoting Peter Angelo, says that baseball has a problem, let the owners prove it. The owners should put their books in a table, but not just any table. He, say, he thinks that uh, it should be a table surrounded by distinguished members of a presidential commission. A blue ribbon panel. Down goes Vigio. Headed by a person perceived to have complete integrity, a member of the Supreme Court or somebody like that. He said representatives of both sides would participate. And major accounting firms could be hired to lend their expertise. He said, let this become a sensible, quiet, intellectual inquiry. The only way to push doubts aside is to prove it with a process that if it is proved, is finished business. We can move on to the next stage. And I, and I like that. That's In other a, words, that's a suggestion. Because all that's ever happened over the years is one side will say something, the other side say, oh, well, I don't believe it. Benzinger's got it, and down goes Finley. So two men are gone quickly here in the Astros six. And that'll bring up Jeff Bagwell. Well, we'll discuss that a little further. Let's watch Bagwell hit because I like to watch him hit, John. Yeah. We pointed out in the last few ball games we've done with Bagwell that he doesn't stride like normal hitters. He just picks his foot up and sits it back down, which is very unusual. But I talked to him also about how and why he crouches so much. Well, the Giants are making a conscious effort to pitch him inside tonight. And again, I don't think they're trying to hit him, but they're trying to establish the fact that they do not want him diving out over the plate. Field, but Strawberry's there, and that is the inning. Well, it must be working. He's only driven in one run tonight. Seven to three, Houston. We go to the set. At the studio, the Indians gaining another split in Boston. Albert Bell's first game back. What a return in his first at bat. A 439-foot home run, his 36th of the year. Gave him 100 RBIs. And look at this tension. Bell arguing a fair or foul call. He was ejected in the 12th inning. Back to you guys. Thank you, Linda. Seven to three, the score here as we go to the seventh inning. Albert Bell is having a year not much unlike the year Jeff Bagwell is having here for the Astros. Bell hitting uh, for the home run numbers. 
the big RBI totals and also for a great batting average Bell was hitting 359 at game time today and he's among the home run leaders in both leagues put together Matt Williams and Bagwell are the two leaders here in the National League and Frank Thomas and Griffey of the American League then Bonds and then Albert Bell all with the shot to finish with 50 or more maybe even 60 in the case of the, especially the case of Matt Williams at this point. Here's Todd Benzinger for the first time in the game. Benzinger hitting 255, eight home runs. And that one took a very bizarre hop and the shot right past Bagwell. Well, you were talking earlier about how the ball bounces and once it hits the turf and then hits the dirt. And this ball bounces back to Bagwell's right and he tried to barehand it. Watch this ball. See it go back to his right. He tries to barehand it. I'd hate for him to hurt his hand on a play like that, especially a seven to three ball game that scored as a base hit. Bullpen activity for the Astros, meanwhile, is Drebeck faces Manwara. By the way, that's a base hit. There's the bullpen, the right hander is Dave Vares and the left hander is Ross Powell. Seven to three Houston ahead in the seventh inning. Base hit for Benzinger the Giants fit. Manwaring one for one with a sacrifice fly. Right center field into the alleyway and past the diving founder. Finley backs up juggles it. Benzinger will be held at third. A stand up double for Manwaring. Even though he has this big lead or a four run lead now, this has not been easy for Dre Beck. Now, Mel Stottlemyre, the Astros pitching coach, will head to the mound to go visit with Doug Dre Beck. Now, this pitch is away from man wearing a slider breaking away and he goes to right center field and a tiny fielder makes a dive for it right there it actually hits off the end of his glove but by the time they get it back in Finley picks it up he bobbles it and the Giants plan it cautiously does not they do not try to score Benzinger they could have scored on that play but they did not want to take a chance with a seven to three deficit. Doug Graybeck he has thrown ninety three pitches in the game. Now he's got another jam here with the runners at second and third. The runner at third is Benzinger. And the runner up there at second is Manwaring. And the hitter, Steve Scarsoni. Scarsoni hitting 273. It was a while there after Robbie Thompson got hurt. They put Scarsoni out there. He got real hot for a week or so. This is what Drayback does so well, pitches out of jam. You always measure a pitcher by how he gets out of jams, whether he can hold the damage to a minimum or whether he opens the floodgates by making bad pitches. Drayback usually holds the damage to a minimum. But I felt that way about Billy Swift, too. Not tonight for Swift. And he chased a real bad one there. Slider way outside and low. Oh, and to the count. Now look at this. Just what you're saying. He just puts everybody into a slump. Right. When there's somebody who could be picked up with a base hit. He's at his best. Who's the pitching equivalent of a great clutch hitter? At his best. When it means the most. Good analogy there, John. Thank you very much. All right. Just thought of it on my own. <laughs> Scarsoni lays off. Not a bad idea, though, if you drive back. I mean, right. he's chased two of them. Why not see if he'll chase another one? A lot of pitching coach say throw it until he proves to you that he can hit it. Mel Stottlemyre. Many years the pitching coach with the Mets. Now here in Houston. That'll get a run home to Cedeno. Just in time. Man, he almost didn't get it. Coming in to score, Benzinger holding it second, Manwaring, and it is seven to four now. 
Well, with two strikes, you have to just try to put the ball in place. Garcon, he gets the slider down and in. He grounds it in the hole. This is a tough play because on AstroTurf, you can't stop and plant yourself. Only because he has such a strong arm is the Daniel able to make that play. And you can see that he clearly gets Garcon at first base. Good play there by Sedano. RBI for Scarsoni. Now the leadoff man, Darren Lewis. The Giants really need to pick up this second run, you'd figure, while they have the chance coming from behind. Or attempting to do so. Only one out. They've got two more shots to get Manwaring home here in the seventh. Seven to four, Houston ahead. Lewis, one for two with a single and a walk and a steal. Popped him up. Chase the curveball. Biggio. Uh, number two. And that leaves it to Royce Clayton with Manwaring still over there at second base. So we've really seen Drabeck tonight not at his at his best. He struggled early and has been uh, getting into and out of jams most of the night. He's thrown on nearly 100 pitches now, and, and most of them have been in pressure situations. When he was with the, the Pirates. Jim Leland used to call him, he was the horse. Well, he used to be a good club, you had to have that horse. The guy was going to give you big innings, pitch the big games. And break the losing streak. Stop the losing streaks. I mean, he's done a good job of that here with the Astros, stopping their losing streaks. The Astros have had their most trouble in this league with the Dodgers. Last year it was the Colorado Rockies, but this year they have not been able to play the hit, you know, win from the Dodgers. They're one and eight against the Dodgers. Cedeno throws him out. Barry Bonds left on deck. Had Bonds come up there, he would have been the possible tying run. Caminiti will be coming up. Seven to four now. The Astros ahead. We go to the last of the seventh inning here from the Astrodome. The house that Joe Morgan built. The house in which Joe Morgan hit the first home run ever hit. Right, I'll go for that. Ken Caminiti. Two for three. Single to the second and scored a run. Single to home, two runs in the third, and scored another one. And then hit a double play ball in the fourth. He is two for three. He's had a hand in four of the Astros' runs. He takes a strike. Dave Berber, the third Giants pitcher of the game. This is his second inning of work. He also came to the Giants in that uh, Kevin Mitchell trade a couple right. years ago. And no one could argue over that trade after last year. Billy Swift and Berber and Mike Jackson all came in the trade that sent Kevin but, Mitchell. But the, the first year of the trade, both teams were Disappointed. Disappointed, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, Mitchell didn't hit all the home runs the Mariners were hoping for, and their bullpen was terrible without Swift and uh, Burba and Jackson. And the Giants, without Kevin Mitchell in their batting order, all of a sudden looked rather anemic. That was the worst year that Matt Williams uh, had. Right. Strike three just powered the fastball past Caminiti. Uh, number one. You can throw the ball by Caminetti up when he's hitting left-handed, but the pitches he's hit in the ball game earlier were down from Billy Swift. This is a high fastball, and he doesn't handle the pitch up very well at all from the left side. 92 mile an hour fastball. Good pitch there from Berba. One down, nobody on. Ken Caminetti retired. Here is Luis Gonzalez, one for three with a run battered in. Lefty line. You sure this is Gonzalez and not Finley? Well, it's one of those two guys. I know <laughs> one that. of the two, right? <laughs> it's funny because Gonzalez, when you're next to the two guys, seems much he's stronger yeah. and he's more of a power hitter than Finley, whose uh, game has more to do with speed. And yet, just facially and they were, their styles to play, they just have a very strong resemblance for one another. Well, I got to argue with you. Finley has 10 home runs. Gonzalez only has eight. Well, <laughs> so who's the power hitter? Huh? Well, maybe they've actually changed. <laughs> maybe they changed. Huh? Okay. <laughs> maybe 
this is Finley. Maybe they're just playing a big joke on all of us this year. Oh, and two, two Gonzalez. Well, there's Gonzalez, so you got the right guy. All right. Off the outside, one ball and two strikes. Joe West, he played up there tonight. He and the other umpires, Ed Rapuano, Greg Bonet, and Frank Pulling, autographed the baseball and sent a, sent a note up yeah. to us tonight, Joe. After uh, we did that little segment on camera a couple right. of minutes ago, they said, please quit going on camera and slowing up the game. It's, that's Joe West, country Joe West, um, he's called. That's the first time, Joe. I mean, you know, you, you come to games, you go for foul balls, trying to get a souvenir of the game, and the umpires sign the ball in mid-game and send it to us. Down is Gonzalez on strike. That's three strikeouts for Berber now. There's Joe West as he was writing well, his actually note on it and send it up to us. <laughs> Two down. Here is. Uh, Tiny Felder's had a fine game tonight. One for three. Drove home a run with a single in the third. And then he also made one of the fine defensive plays of the game. Base hit. His second hit. Felder threw out Manwaring back in the fifth inning, trying to stretch a single into a double. But a beautiful throw. Mike Felder. Remember when he was with Milwaukee? A pesky player he was. I mean, he was a fine outfielder. Got a lot of walks, stole bases. He had some real good years with the Giants, too. And then he went up to Seattle for a year. He's kind of a handy man to have around if you're a good ball club. Very handy because he can run, he can play infield if he has to, he can play the outfield, and he's a good pinch hitter. He, too, is from the Bay Area, originally from uh, Richmond, California. Went to high school there at Kennedy High School, and then went to Contra Costa College in the Bay Area. And still lives out there in Richmond now in the offseason. Scott Service, one for three in the game. Felder, 32 years of age now. In for a strike. All two to count. We're in the last of the seventh. Houston seven, the Giants four. Next Sunday, we're hoping to greet you from Yankee Stadium. Man, are the Yankees, have they been something this year, although they they blew a lead in the eighth inning today. Even with the loss today, they have gone 19 and 5 since the All-Star break. Scoring lots of runs, doing whatever it takes to win a ball game. Under the uh, fine young manager, Buck Showalter. And so guys are really having some great years there. Paul O'Neill. Wade Boggs looks like the old Wade Boggs again. 350 batting average. And on down the list, I mean, it just it's a very deep ball club. Maybe in terms of the, the productive Daddy. talent they get coming off the bench, maybe the deepest in the majors. And remember the graphic we had once about Don Mattingly going the longest period of time without playing in a playoff game. Yep. Maybe. Of any current player. Any current player. So maybe this could uh, be the year that he gets in a playoff. Just off the outside, one ball and two strikes to service. Yankees have seven players who've had 50 RBIs or more this year. Just, uh, a lot of uh, strong role players, and not a whole lot of uh, back page news in the New York Daily News or the New York Post. I mean, their their news comes on the field, right? Which is very good for a ball club that's trying to win. That's Johnny B, Dusty Baker. And Dusty has handled this situation very, very well. And that is a fact of being one of the best teams in Major League Baseball last year and having to struggle just to stay close to the Dodgers this year. He's handled it very well. Strike three. Berba strikes out the side. All right, the power's coming up. This may be the last shot for the Giants. We're heading to the eighth. It'll be Bonds, Williams, and Strawberry. They're down by three. Stay with it. ESP 
Inning and Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by Mailboxes Etc. It's not what they do, it's how they do it. And with Joe Morgan, this is John Miller from the Houston Astrodome, the original dome, the first one where they developed AstroTurf. And there's Milt Thompson now and to right field as a double switch has been affected by Terry Collins. Thompson will hit ninth in the order and there's the new pitcher on in relief of Doug Graybeck. His name is Ross Powell. And we don't know much about him because we haven't seen him. However, we do know that he has not yet been scored upon in 10 big league appearances. Barry Bonds hitting 283 against left handers including 11 home runs. He's averaging one homer for every 10 at bats against the lefties. Left handers definitely do not slow Barry Bonds down very often. He's got to get a kind of a, a herky jerky motion there. And also the now, fact he hasn't seen him late before. And that's a that's baseball talk. Yeah, I got herky jerky. Foul away. One ball and two strikes to Bonds. There are stylish left-handers, then there are herky-jerky left-handers. Yeah. This guy would uh, tend toward the latter. Yeah, herky-jerky is official baseball language. <laughs> Ross Powell in the eighth inning. Williams on deck. Fouled away. You gotta look at it there, sort of the way Bonds gets a look at, uh, look at it. He dropped down and came sidearm on Barry. Barry does, still does not give very much on that pitch. Tough when you haven't seen him before to pick up the ball from this guy. And the slider is low. Well, the reason Barry hits left hand as well is because he does not have a lot of movement in his body or his head before he attacks the ball. Everything's pretty basic in that he keeps everything still, keeps his head in there, his arm in there. You can see you don't see him off balance jumping out there on the breaking ball. There's Matt Williams, the Major League home run leader on deck. Giants down by three. Three and two to Barry Bonds. Strawberry due up third of the inning. So this is a big pitch here for Powell. He just got a piece of it. Three and two. And that's where you get in trouble as a hitter because you think sometimes you say, well, this guy doesn't want to walk me with Matt Williams on deck. But that's not what Powell is thinking. He's thinking, I have to get you out, Barry. And he threw him a 3-2 breaking ball. A lot of times you get a hitter chase that, to chase that pitch. Bagwell's got it. The unassisted put out. Boy, Bonds really smoked that one, but right to Bagwell. Bonds is one for three tonight. Bonds is about as good a hitter as you're going to find against left-handed pitching power-wise. I'm not talking about just getting base hits for an average. He can hit the ball out of the ballpark consistently against left-handed pitching. There are a lot of left-handers who can slap the ball around and go back through the middle and get base hits, but not a lot of them can hit for the power numbers against left-handed pitching that Barry Bonds can. One gone, and now Matt Williams. He's been kept off the bases tonight, 0 for 3. He's lined out to the second baseman, flied out to shallow right center, flied out to center. One on nobody out of the eighth inning. Seven to four, Houston ahead. Ball one. Ross Powell picked up in mid-April from uh, Cincinnati, part of a trade that sent uh, catcher Eddie uh, Torpenzi to the Reds. Foul out of the University of Michigan. Twenty-six years of age. Spins a little breaking ball in there. One ball, one strike. Now. Powell actually got into nine games with the Reds last year. His previous major league experience. He was 0-3 with a 4.41 burned run average. Williams has really teed off against the left-handers this year. He right now is looking bad against Ross Powell. Now because he has such a herky-jerky motion, it's hard to pick the ball up. Now see, he hides the ball, he hides the ball. Now, all of a sudden, here it comes, and you see that big breaking ball. Matt was fooled more by the speed than he was the break of the ball. Way out in front of that pitch. So it 
pitches now. One ball and two strikes to Matt Williams. Matt Williams has stated on several occasions that he does not really see the ball well here in the Astrodome. He does, he's not able to pick the spin up as well as he would like. Did he swing? Well, they're not even going to ask for an appeal on that one. Two and two to count. Take a look at this. Yeah, he has the bat under control, John. Darrell Strawberry on deck. Giants trailing by three. Two and two, the count. Pop fly along the right field line. Power. Just barely. Bullpens are busy. Out of the Giants bullpen, there is Rich Monteleone warming up. And that is Todd Jones of the Astro bullpen. Hard throwing right handed. Powell, the second Astros pitcher of the game, facing the Major League home run leader right here, Matt Williams. Struck him out. Well, Powell threw him all breaking balls, and he's able to get Matt out. Here comes another one. You can see the spin on that breaking ball. And Matt swings right over the top of it. And now the fans get into that taunting of Strawberry again as he comes up. As again, Matt Williams unable to handle that low slider. For Strawberry's used to this. You're right. I mean, he's always been uh, kind of the, the villain as he's traveled around baseball. All those many years with the Mets in particular. strike Matt Williams and he's toned down considerably over the years but still the perfectionist and he's still kind of fumes well, things don't go as he would like this is having his uh, young children got three young children now help them get a little better perspective on the whole deal to strawberry slider misses ball two I like Matt Williams comment he says hey I go home and my little kids don't care if I hit a home run or not they just want a hug maybe they need a diaper change he says and I like that two and two down to strawberry Williams used to be such a perfectionist that there was a time after he'd been sent back to the minor leagues after not doing one well of the big leagues. He called home and told his family was thinking of retiring. Struck him out with a slider. Ross Powell gets Bonds, Williams, and Strawberry in order. And that doesn't leave much left for the Giants who are trailing seven to four. Inning number eight, Sunday night baseball from Houston. Astros lead seven to four on Duhar Cedeno. Powell's one right back to the screen against Dave Berba of the Giants. This is John Miller with Joe Morgan. Every Sunday through the baseball season right here, this is where you'll find us, eight Eastern, seven Central, five Pacific. And even next week, if there are no major league games going, you'll find us same time, same station. Michael Jordan in his uh, baseball career, the Birmingham Barons and the Memphis Chicks. Next Sunday, although much as we'd like to see Michael and are interested in what's happening with him, we'd much rather be at Yankee Stadium to see uh, Paul Monitor, Roberto Alomar, Joe Carter, 
Blue Jays and the Yankees, Paul O'Neill, Wade Boggs, Don Mattingly, and company. Two strike pitch. And the fastball is outside. One ball, two strikes. Cedeno, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. Milt Thompson is on deck, and then Craig Biggio will be due up third in the inning. Berber, four strikeouts in his two innings tonight. That's a base hit. Hit number 13 for the Astros. Yeah, John, earlier tonight, Bob Watson. The Astros general manager came by to say hello to us. Bob was a teammate of mine when I played here. Now he's the general manager at Astros. He was admiring your tie. And a lot of people aren't familiar. Bob Watson had surgery a few weeks ago. And he's doing well. He came by to say hello. And Jeff Bagwell just broke his RBI record. Clayton the second to get one and a double play. Scarsoni turning it on the feed from Clayton, six to four to three. In one swing of the bat earlier this week, well, last week, he brought Jimmy Wynn's home run record and Bob Watson RBI record all in one swing. That's Jeff Bagwell, I mean. This is Clayton. Good feed over the second. Scarsoni back to first. It's a double play. I'm oh, very glad to see that Bob Watson uh, is doing well. And uh, he had some very serious surgery. That, uh, he was under the knife for uh, more than six hours. Yeah. He says he's on a rehab program, feeling pretty good. Bob Watson, who twice hit for the cycle. I mean, most guys don't do it once. I can attest to that. <laughs> you never did it? Never. Well, then I then forget everything I've said tonight. <laughs> never did that. Tonight we're at the Houston Astrodome, the house that Bob Watson built. See there? Yeah, you're right. It really went down. <laughs> Greg Biggio, two for four. And it's one and two. And Berber looks great tonight. He's throwing the ball very well. I also saw the toy cannon today, Jimmy Wynn. It was his home run record that Jeff Bagwell saw broke. So I've seen all the guys that he passed in the last couple of days. Jimmy Wynn, 1967, 37 wow. home runs. That's when his, this was a big ballpark. Yeah, he didn't hit any uh, 23 of them no. here. No. That's when Hank Aaron beat him out by one home run, and there's a, one of the seats that he hit. And Hank Aaron says, I don't consider myself the league champion. Jimmy Wynn is because he played in a tougher ballpark. But Jimmy Wynn had some great years here. Jimmy Wynn, I mean, he was a pretty good outfielder, but he great home run hitter, and he stole bases. Stole a lot of bases, stole 44 out of 47 his first full year in the major leagues. Three and two the count, and that's a ball four to Biggio. Third time tonight that he has reached base. And here comes uh, Bagwell out on deck as Steve Finley strides to the plate. And Jimmy there's Wynn. Jimmy Wynn. And that's the powerful swing of Jimmy Wynn. They taught him the toy cannon because he wasn't very big, but he used a 36-inch, 36-ounce bat. Look at all the home runs and runs batted in he had. He also played for the Dodgers and the Braves, uh, not the Braves, the Milwaukee Brewers, and I think the Yankees, too. Well, with Steve Finley coming up, we're going to get a pitching change. Dusty Baker goes to the mound. He's going to bring in Steve Fry, a left-hander, and pick up for Berber. And a hope... I guess that Fry will end the inning before Bagwell comes up. We'll be back. Or there is Steve Fry, the fourth Giants pitcher of the game, making his 43rd appearance for the Giants. On to face Steve Finley with two down and the Biggio, the runner at first base. Biggio has 37 steals this year and has been caught only four times. He has turned into an excellent player, John, offensively and defensively. I remember when they were going to move Vigio, or were talking to him about becoming a second baseman instead of a catcher. One of the worries was is that as a catcher who could steal lots of bases, that was something unique. That was something special. And he was afraid that maybe if he moved to second base, he'd just be another second baseman. Right. 
but he's really distinguishing himself now. Well, he definitely is. I mean, in that, you know, he's hitting over 300. He's stealing bases. He's playing good defense. And he's an excellent leadoff here. So he's, he's not just a run of the mill second base. He's turning into one of the better leadoff men in the league. Right. He's definitely one of the better players in this league. I mean, he's not stealing 80 bases. He doesn't have that 440 on base every, but he means very solid. And back to the bag he goes. Maybe he will steal 70 bases one of these years. He seems to be getting better and better. Steve Fry been a lot of games, very high earned run average. He was really terrible earlier in the year. He had some good numbers before the Angels and before that with Montreal. But Dusty Baker got a little frustrated during the spring because he never saw Frank get anybody out. <laughs> Finally called Buck Rogers, then the manager of the Angels, who had used him in Anaheim the year before. He says, how did you use this guy? <laughs> and Buck said he didn't know what to tell him. He says, well, everybody uses everybody differently. You'll just have to <laughs> get a feel for it. Get a feel for it. Well, I don't know. It's taken him a while to figure it out. Fry was complaining about the cold at Candlestick. He couldn't get a grip on the ball. All kinds of different things. He's pitched 30 and two thirds innings. He's given up 35 hits, but also six home runs, which is very bad for a guy who usually comes in to face lefties. And he's fallen behind Finley here, three and one. Finley, one for three with a double that drove home a run. There goes Biggio. Base hit that almost hit Biggio. The second baseman, Scarsoni, was over to cover the bag, and that's right where Finley hit the ball, right where Scarsoni had been. Well, on a three and one pitch, they put the hit and run on, and Scarsoni is covering. So when Finley's ground ball, there would be a routine ground ball to second base. Now goes through into right field. So that's a routine ground ball, but you can see Garcioni start towards second. And moving around to third base easily on the play. And here comes, here comes Dusty Baker. You get the right hand batting Bagwell coming up, and he's got a right hander. Monteleone ready in the bullpen, so we may get another change here. In fact, I'm just going to go out, Jones, and I'm going to predict it. Yeah. I was right. Seven to four, Houston. Two on, two out. Bagwell coming up. Stay with us. Seven to four, Astros. Bagwell coming up against the new Giants pitcher, Rich Monteleone. In an RBI situation, Monteleone, the fifth Giants pitcher of the game. Now, Bagwell with 116 RBIs, and he uses that wide open stance. And we talked to him before about. Why does it? What he gains from it? I have an inside-out swing. Uh, you cannot. It's tough to pull a ball with an inside-out swing, an inside pitch. You can't get your hands to the ball, and get the bat head out. You end up getting jammed or hitting, the, you know, hitting the ball in the right field. But, um, for me to, for me to get my body and my hips to the ball, I have to hit with an open stance so I can get my hands out and through. That's a pretty good explanation. Uh, he says he has an inside out swing. I don't quite understand that. Uh, a deep crouch. Strike and it's on one. And when I talked to him about the crouch, John, he, he spread out more this year than last year because last year he was in a crouch, but he always felt like he came out of it too soon and he hit a lot of topspin on balls and they wouldn't go out of the ballpark. He's widened his stance, which keeps him down on the ball. And he just turns his wrist loose, he turns his hands loose, and he opens his hip quickly. Biggio at third, Finley at first, two down. Outside, one ball, one strike. The switch hitting Ken Caminiti would be next. The Giants have more activity in their bullpen. We're in the last of the eight, seven to four, Houston. There's Caminiti at two RBIs tonight. Jeff Bagwell. Can he do it again? Came inside. He tried to check his swing and uh, fouled it. One ball, 
and two strikes. Well, they've got a good cat and mouse game going on here. Watch Kurt Manwaring. He sets up outside first, then he moves inside. And Bagwell tried to check his swing. Good pitch there Mont by Monteleone. Now, he's not setting up quickly. He's waiting until Monteleone starts his delivery before he sets up. That is Kurt Manwaring. The first time up, he set up inside and then moved outside. They're trying to trick Bagwell. Cat and mouse going on. See, he's not setting up yet. Now he moved outside. Struck him out. So Monteleone gets it done. And for one of the few times, Bagwell doesn't. Last chance for the Giants going to the ninth. Seven to four, Houston, top of the ninth. Last chance for the Giants. John, let's see if we can follow up on what Bagwell said about the inside out swing. As I mentioned, he's wide this crouch so that he stays down. Now we're going to look from overhead. Now let's see if he starts with the bat inside and goes to out. With, now with the wide open stance, he's already open, so he doesn't have to fight to get his hands through the zone. And that's what he's talking about. So what he's done is taken that inside out swing and made it more of a straight away swing. He doesn't go inside out anymore. And that's what the stance has helped him to be able to do. And we're going to have a pitching change. Well, Mark Carrion, while we were talking about that, a right-handed hitter was introduced as a pinch hitter for the pitcher, Monteleone. And once he was introduced, the left-hander, Ross Powell, has been taken out of the game. And a right-hander will be coming on here, and that will be Todd Jones. We'll be back. Once again, we're back for the ninth inning. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Yeah, he has the pistol one hitter. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, no changes coming here. Yeah. He It'll to. definitely be Todd Jones against Mark Carrion. <laughs> and now the inning is underway. Foul ball, strike one. Mark Carrion, 276, one of the uh, Giants' top pinch hitters. Six for 19 as a pinch hitter. Over the middle, there is Cedeno. And one away in the ninth inning. For the Giants, two outs between them and a six game losing streak. Todd Jones, one of the uh, hard throwing young pitchers in the Astros bullpen, 2.87 earned run average, 69 innings, 52 hits. Tough to hit 62 strikeouts only 25 walks last night their bullpen failed or at least faltered they were ahead eight to four in the ninth inning is that a swing no Todd Benzinger checking his swing ball one and the Giants get three runs in the ninth inning before finally succumbing eight to seven that was John Hudak the man had become their closer. Uh, Hudek just couldn't get it done last night. Sports Center right after the game. Sunday conversation with Greg Norman. Albert Bell returns to the Cleveland Indians lineup for a while. And then the Dream Team. Well, he didn't get kicked out to the 12th inning. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a lot of innings. Strike two, one and two the count. And then the uh, the the Dream Team 2 in the World Basketball Championships. Third ball, too low, two and two the count. Todd Jones has a big breaking curveball. He throws at two different speeds, a slower one and a real hard one. And as you mentioned, he throws real hard, so he has very good stuff. In fact, the entire Houston bullpen has good stuff. They will falter every once in a while because they are young. Biggio. Throws him out. Benzinger in time. Two down in the ninth inning. The Astros one out away from remaining. One game behind Cincinnati in the Central. And sending the Giants out of here five games out in the West. San Diego will be here on Tuesday. To open a three game series. The Giants are staying out on the road. Cincinnati won this afternoon. So then that would shift to one game ahead of Houston. And the Dodgers would be five ahead of the Giants if this score were to hold up. 
Giants are heading from here to Chicago as uh, Reed, the pinch hitter, 0 and 1. Hitting 176. Jeff Reed. Although he hit his only home run of the year here last night. Batting for Kurt Manwaring. Manwaring went two for two. Check swing, and just like that, Jones is ahead 0 and 2. Six in a row, Dusty. And his Giants heading for Wrigley Field. And they will not even have a chance. This will be their 60th loss if it happens. All of last year, they lost 59 times. Tonight would be number 60, and they would have 50 games still to play this year. Two strike pitch. One and two. Well, the one thing I will say for the Giants and Dusty Baker, Dusty will keep these guys going. I don't, I don't think they will ever quit until the season is over. And it is very difficult to bounce back from having a great year last year and starting off slowly this year. Just did get a piece of it. And one thing also, despite the terrible record, I mean, 52 and 60 is not a good record in any league. Yet they are still in contention. It would be only five games out with 50 to go. Plenty of time for them to get hot again and catch the Dodgers. Two down, two strikes. Into the crowd, still one ball and two strikes to Jeff Reed. Steve Scarsoni is on deck. Terry Collins, first year manager of the Astros, keeping them close. Well, I'd like to uh, have gotten a little more help this weekend from the Atlanta Braves, but Cincinnati held its own with the Braves over the weekend. There are certain teams in this league that obviously are dominating the other ones. And as I mentioned earlier, they have a one and eight record against the Dodgers. Steve Finley on the run. And that ends it. It's a sweep for the Houston Astros. For the Giants, the sixth consecutive loss. Drayback with his 12th win. Swift gets the loss. And Bagwell had one more RBI. And Barry Bonds, one more home run. Astros seven, Giants four. Next Sunday, the Blue Jays and the Yankees from Yankee Stadium at 8 Eastern. Unless there's a strike, in which case we'll be in Memphis to watch Michael Jordan and the Barons and the Memphis Chicks. Stay tuned. Sports Center is next. Now from Houston, John Miller for Joe Morgan. Thanks for watching, everyone. Now, good night.